You perfected your wardrobe. What about the stuff not everybody gets to see? If you've been settling for store-bought underwear five packs, we got something that's going to change your life for the better. Talking about me undies. Now, what is me undies? Oh, just seriously soft, feel-good undies delivered right to your door. They're designed in LA and made from sustainably sourced micromodal, a fabric three times softer than cotton. Softer than soft, luxurious undies come in an ever-changing selection of classic colors, bold shades, and adventurous patterns, so you can tailor your undies to your personal style. And you know what? You can save time and money with a monthly subscription. I've got a few pairs of me undies. Man, they are real comfortable. Every time I work my way through the laundry and I got those me undies there that I'm going to put on my body, ooh, I get real excited because they are comfy. If you're not ready for a subscription, you, that's okay. You can save. This is because me undies is offering you 20% off your first pair. Just use your special URL, meundies.com slash doughboys and get 20% off your first pair. Go ahead, revamp your underwear drawer. You deserve it. I know you. You deserve it. Do something nice for yourself. Try me undies. You never spoil yourself. You're too worried about taking care of other people. You got to take care of you. You're the protagonist of your own life. Make sure you are comfortable. Go to MeUndies.com slash Doughboys. That's right. MeUndies.com slash Doughboys. Guys, Sklar Brothers here with Dan Van Kirk, and we've got Moshe Kasher from Problematic with Moshe Kasher on the podcast this week. Buddy, damn right. you are amazing. You get the, you you are a tremendous guesser, although we don't want to give that away. No, just throwing shit everywhere. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. alert. There's, there are some spoiler alerts. We, we spoil some things for you. You're spoiler gonna... alert. Things are spoiled on the upcoming episode. Oh, How why'd you do that? Right. I think you just have to listen to find out what gets spoiled. Huh? How about that for peaking interest? Dump people down. Brentwood, California. Situated in the northwest corner of Los Angeles, its array of white tablecloth restaurants and high-end boutiques speaks to its position as one of the city's wealthiest neighborhoods. But this Tory enclave of mansions for celebrities and entertainment executives, as well as luxury apartments for status seekers, became best known as the site of the O.J. Simpson murders, in which the football and movie star would stand accused of murdering his ex-wife and her waiter friend. In the double homicide and subsequent trials that would dominate the national news during the mid-90s, Simpson would be acquitted criminally but found liable civilly, a verdict that bankrupted him and forced him to sell his beloved Brentwood estate on Rockingham Avenue. The house was bulldozed and a new mansion built in its place, the land too valuable to be left unoccupied by some L.A. millionaire. But three decades prior to O.J.'s murder case, ignobly elevating a neighborhood that formerly boasted privacy for its elite residents, Herbert Hyman chose Brentwood as the site of his first gourmet coffee shop. While Americans were avid coffee consumers, it was mostly of a low-end drip or diner variety, and Hyman's gourmet roasted premium blends were a hit with the upper class eager for an outlet for their disposable income. By the 70s, Hyman had coffee shops throughout the Southland. So successful was his business in California that, in 1991, another coffee chain attempted to purchase it, Starbucks. For better or worse, Hyman declined, and the brand continues to operate and expand worldwide, though relegated to the runner-up role, the Burger King to Starbucks McDonald's. Still, as the once fashionable store has been supplanted in its hometown by increasingly snobby artists and coffee shops, Hyman's chain is no doubt one of Brentwood's great success stories. This week on Doughboys, The Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. Welcome to Doughboys, the podcast about chain restaurants. We're a production of FeralAudio.com. I'm Nick Weiger, alongside my co-host, Unkar Plett without the portion control, the spoon man, Mike Mitchell. <laughs> wow. It's been a while since we've shouted out Unkar Plett on the podcast. It's been a while. He kind of faded from it once Rogue One came out. We were talking about The Force Awakens. Why is that? He's such a memorable character. <laughs> he really he really is. He put an, an indelible stamp on the Star Wars universe. He's you know, there's a, a there's Chewbacca, a lot of, for instance, or a Yoda. He, Unkar is right. on the same level as He's those. A, if you're making that, that uh, Mount Rushmore of Star Wars aliens, Yoda's mm-hmm. going to be there, Chewbacca's going to be there, Unkar Plutt, and then probably, the, what, the Lizard Bounty Hunter? The, <laughs> the lizard. What is the lizard bounty hound? I know, like IG eighty eight. Yeah, I mean, we should oh, know he, these. Is it Bosk? Oh, Bosk. Bosk. It is, is it? Bosk with two Ks. Not correct? to be confused with Amazon's Bosch. No. Wait, Amazon's Bosch. It is. It is. It's not Amazon's Bosch. No, it's not Amazon's. But you might think that because you're like, oh, lizards. He's from the Amazon. Mm-hmm. But it must be Amazon's Bosch. Must be the show about this guy's <laughs> like a prequel sort of thing. Can but we? No, name, it's a different character. Can we name all those bounty hunters? We can't. I mean, I'm sure that I could at some point. Yeah, IG eighty eight. 
I, IG-88 boss, and then after that, I'm, like, tapped out. IG-88, who you fight in Shadows of the Empire. Um, that's a great boss fight. It is. It's a great boss fight. He's tough. Whatever happened to Kyle Katarn? Was that him, Kyle Katarn? Are you talking about Dash Rendar? Oh, Dash Rendar. I'm you sorry. You fool. Kyle Katarn is the guy from a, a different Star Wars game. Which one is, is he from? What the fuck? What is he from? Dark Forces? Which one I don't is he know. from? This isn't canon to me. Look, Kyle Katarn was an important character in my youth. One thing's for sure: we're looking pretty cool in front of our guests. <laughs> <laughs> he was from. Wait, he was from five games: Star Wars Lethal Alliance, Star Wars Dark Forces. That was his oh, first okay. one, and then he was in Dark Forces Two, where you get to turn into a Jedi. Whoa! Pretty sweet. Um, that, everyone, that's every, that's what everyone wants to do is they want to become a Jedi in the game. Well, because that's kind of the thing. Because like he's kind of the Kyle Katarn. He's like kind of the stand-in for Han Solo. But then it's mm. like, oh, but you also want to be a Jedi. It's like, well, best of both worlds. You get to be a cool scoundrel bounty, uh, scoundrel smuggler like uh-huh. Han Solo, but you also get to be a Force Master with a lightsaber. Like that Luke feels not Skywalker. fair. Like Han isn't. Uh, you know what I mean? Like right. you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to get the best. Yeah, of both you worlds. don't get to do both. Jedi's are like more nerdy. Right, you know what I mean, and and then Han Solo is kind of the cooler one. It's like you're Jedi ish, and I'm Han Solo. Hey, you know what? I'll take it, and I'll take it as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, real quick, that roast before you do your drop. That roast was courtesy of Matt Elliott. If you've got a roast you'd like me to use, I'm at the top of the show. Roast Spoonman at gmail dot com, or don't submit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Howdy how to Spoon Nation. My throat is a little not great, so I apologize for that. And here's a little drop. Mitch, how's your penis doing? What? Mitch, you really look like you're... Sh- I'm legitimately getting worried. Oh, there's a peanut in it. I don't like this. Yeah, like a, a little sweet with a little bit of... With a lot of salty. I think that's a good combo. No! What the fuck is wrong with you? you I'm, a, I'm a Caucasian man! God damn it, Weiger. My old saying goes, <laughs> I don't make them, I just play <laughs> <laughs> That, uh, I like that's, a, that. that's a WikiLeaks defense. <laughs> You're like, oh, I just put it out there. I don't know. I'm not saying anything. There we go. I, I, I had to unplug my phone there. That that was a drop courtesy of, uh, one second, of uh, Jonathan Schwartz. Hmm. And it says, I have a drop, my man. You didn't give me your um, your Twitter or anything like that. There's no information just besides Jonathan Schwartz. Well, you know what? Hey, may the Schwartz be with you. Yeah, may the Schwartz be with you. Good job, buddy. Um, there's two other drops in here, but they're both a minute long. Well, you already played one. That's I know, fine. I'm you just, play I, know, I don't drops. have to play all of them. I'm just saying that I, you don't want me to play ones that are a minute, a minute long, right? You can play, it's fine if it's a minute long. I'm just saying you already played one for this episode. Yeah, I'm not going to play another one. Okay, but I just... Use your ju- use your discretion. There's no hard time limit. You had a point where you played one where I think you said it was literally five minutes, mm-hmm. and that was excessive. I didn't think so. That. The sixty minute deadline. Think of that as arbitrary. Use your best judgment, but don't don't push it. Fine. Um, you Mitch- know what? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, we have a great guest here today. We do. Very excited to have her. You know, guests on this show usually trash. Jesus Christ. I'm saying doing? our guests are trash, every single one of them, until today. Mish. <laughs> you know it's true, Iger. You're, you're causing trouble, but everyone knows you're having a laugh. They'll love you anyway. No, it's the truth. <laughs> trash. Mish. Uh, from The Exorcist, Filthy Preppy Teens, and Comedy Bang Bang, Hannah Kasolka is here. Hi, Hannah. Hi. Hey, Han- I, thank you for coming on. Thank you for starting beef with me and every other one of your guests. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said you were. Oh, I guess yes. All yeah, of them no, are going to be against you. Yeah, I'm going to have to like arm wrestle some people. I think, <laughs> when I leave here, that's how it's going to be settled. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, you could take Susser. <laughs> you easily take Susser. Um, you or I were. On, you and I were on uh, filthy. Uh, filthy. Wait, pr- what, okay. what did it turn out being? <laughs> I think that the title ultimately was filthy preppy teens. Filthy right? yes. preppy teens. Because okay. yes. filthy sexy teens was too, too risque sexy oh yeah. wow okay i don't know i, have I no idea. you you had a, a, a you were very funny in that uh Thank in that you. show and you had a great role and i played like a doofy security <laughs> man where the joke was right. was that like f- filthy sexy preppy teens were like two of them like fucked me like like i was like trying to be like a security guard and yeah. then they would like jump on me the, the joke was like how outlandish that this would ever happen <laughs> it's also like because like <laughs> You guys aren't too, too far away from each other in age. No. The idea was that, like, Hannah would be a student yes. and you would be, like, this worker at the school. An old yeah, man old worker. Man. Well, that's also, that was also, like, part of the joke, I think, because, uh, yeah, Casey Wilson played my mom in the pilot. Right. And, like, 
there's no way she could be my, my mom <laughs> um, unless she had me at like 12. So that was like part of the joke that I'm older playing younger. But I sort yeah. of do that now too. It's weird. I don't know. Mm. You got to make out with my friend. That's right. Yes. Jaylee. Hell yeah. Those Hell stage yeah. kisses. <laughs> Sexy. No she- one no one can pretend to be excited. <laughs> I, I, of course I didn't. I was like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry. I always just say, I'm sorry you have to do this. Yeah. <laughs> to every... Off every, camera too. That's <laughs> just part of your Oh, no, yes. I'm, I'm, when you're, I'm on a date, too. I noticed your bedroom has a sign above it that just says, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anna, what in the fuck? <laughs> you were oh, friends. No. Now I'm the worst guest. <laughs> <laughs> you, are, you know what? Decent. I take it back to all those guests. <laughs> Anna, you, so you were, I get a question for you. Uh-huh. You were on The Exorcist. Yes. Uh, a very scary show. Mm-hmm. Now, I am afraid of the devil. Nick knows this. <laughs> This is a real fear of mine. Yeah, yeah. He's really afraid he's going to get to hell. The devil will be there with his hooved feet and his pitchfork and his pointy tail and, and start poking him in the butt. Yes. <laughs> it was actually, yes, 100%. Um, he can do anything he wants. If you've seen Little Nicky, mm-hmm. he can put boobs on your head uh, if you misbehave. Mm-hmm. And, and Little Nicky is canonical, right? That's, yes. Like, that's bib- the, the, yeah, it's yeah, Bible yeah. sanctioned it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a little boy died and then he saw hell and then he wrote a book about it and then it turned into Little Nicky. <laughs> Uh, did you, did you, so the movie is terrifying. Had you, had you seen the movie before you got the part to, to, you you had not seen it? No, because I'm also, well, I was raised to be afraid of the devil. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm afraid of the devil anymore, but. Right, because you're an an adult. An adult. (laughs) Yeah, sorry. Yeah, we'll see about that. (laughs) We'll see, we'll see. Um, no, but my, I was raised in Georgia where. Ooh, that's where the devil goes down to. (laughs) Yes, he's down there. So we've, we're all like fairly warned, uh, Mm. growing up and I like grew up Christian and we didn't even, I didn't even get to trick or treat because it was like, it's the devil. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and yeah. I, I'm, I'm from SoCal and I, I had friends like that too. I, I and went to a no like a Halloween was banned Halloween party once. There was mm-hmm. like a witch <laughs> in the in the Ghostbusters symbol. It was like there was no a witch, witch in allowed. the Ghostbusters. Uh, yeah, that was like the logo for the party. And then you go in there and there was like no. It was just like a a, a fair with no like what? Halloween stuff at all. It was like meant to suppress. It was, the only thing that was at, that at all supernatural was this was with my my, my buddy Dane. Um, and his family was super Dane Christian. Cook. Yeah, my my childhood <laughs> friend Dane Cook. Um, his family was super Christian, and so like the only thing is that all supernatural besides the no witches logo was there was a booth with the devil where you could trade in tickets, fair tickets, to get sponges to throw at him. <laughs> And it was Jesus. it was just some some guy some kid's dad like painted as the devil, and then you would throw sponges at him, and he'd be like very afraid, he'd be like, "No, no, I don't like it." <laughs> like you, like the devil was a little scared. Why are you talking like a little oh, baby voice? I don't know. It was, weird. it was a weird choice. Yeah. Ew. By the way, you gave me a, witch busters is a great idea. Yeah. Witch, like a witch with a thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Wait, is that already a thing? Is there like a witch hunting movie? Oh, Hansel and Gretel witch hunters. Yeah. There was exists. also too. There was wasn't he? Wasn't there a witch hunter in? It wasn't uh, Vin Diesel a witch hunter? Oh, maybe. He went after witches, right? Mm, they've hunted well, witches know. already, I guess. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I took you on a tangent there. You were, no, yeah, no. You were, you were, I, uh, um, Santa was also an issue. Santa was an issue. Like, mm. any holiday that was like... Well, I was just told very... I think I never, like, believed. I think my mom tried to make me believe in Santa or did the thing. Mm-hmm. And I was just always kind of cynical i don't yeah. know what my deal was and i was just like yeah i know you did this <laughs> nice try i I've, I've said on this podcast before that i think i i said this but i uh my mom sat me down on the couch <laughs> when i was like way too old like mm. probably like 13 oh, no. yeah oh. and was like santa you know doesn't exist oh no and i was like but like the spirit of christmas does <laughs> And she was like, "You're a fucking loser." <laughs> <laughs> and you've, uh, you've been, that's the last time you spoke to your mom. <laughs> um, no, but anything. And I think my nana was very relieved that I did not believe in Santa because she was like, "Yes, it's about Jesus." And mm. um, and then she told me, "I was like, what did like where did Santa even come from? Like, why do we do this? Why are people tricking kids? This is weird." And she told me this story like. 
Now I'm on a tangent. She told me this story that Santa was a, a nice man who lived a really long time ago and he would give presents to kids at an orphanage. And he lived a really long time ago was the thing that I took from that story. Mm. So I went to school the next day and was like, Santa's dead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and got in big trouble. Oh, um, no. Like with the, wait, with other students or the teachers? I told, you? like I told all the kids and yeah. then the kids kind of had a meltdown right. at school. And, uh, That's it. it's like a little Bart Simpson line. <laughs> Santa's dead, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an asshole. <laughs> like, I guess it's the takeaway. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, I was like going to Sunday school and doing the whole thing, not trigger treating. We've mm-hmm. got to later, but it was always kind of like cautioned. And I never right. got to be scary and I never got to watch scary movies. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I never saw I never saw The Exorcist. I like watched part of The Ring in high school with like a group of people. A and scary it, movie. It's very scary. I, I think that I think the, the remake, the American remake of The Ring is is good. Yeah, Gore Verbinski. He did a good job. That's a scary. Yeah. Gore Verbinski is a good director. He's made some good films. First, you Pirates love the Pirates movie. movies. I don't love the Pirates movies. R- but Rango. He's the Rango guy. That's right, Rango guy. Oh. People forgot about time. Forgot about Rango. Everyone yes. loved Rango for a time. Yeah. Where after Shrek, everyone is Rango crazy. There was for a Rango years. fever. I there remember. There was Rango fever, and then it faded. Mm-hmm. Now, whatever happened wow. to Rango? Where, there, where's Rango <laughs> Two? Feels like you should greenlight that yesterday. There was a stretch of, I'd say, for speaking of Halloween's, I think there was a stretch of like. What seven, eight Halloweens where everyone was dressed as Rango? Right. <laughs> it was. You would see people either as Rango or, or as Bosk, and you'd be like, "Okay, th- is there some lizard thing going on in the Zeitgeist right I think, now?" I think yeah. Rango took over for Bosk. <laughs> yeah, was the big was was what happened. The torch was replaced. I had a Rango birthday party three years in a row. So, <laughs> <laughs> I speaking of of. Of see, well, I never. You guys are weirdos, and I never had this this weird anti Halloween <laughs> thing. Uh, I would go. We would go on haunted hair rides for my birthday. Too scary. We we, Too we would scary. Do, we would do scary stuff like that. But the, the, I, I had to say, The Exorcist is truly. It's maybe the scariest movie of all time. I think. I, I think. Right. I think. It, yeah. I think, I think it's 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 way up there. Uh, if not number one, and, and it's it definitely in the top three. It affects people the most, I think, because mm-hmm. it's like. Yeah, people are scared of the devil. I think yeah. no, right. even if pe- even if people are like, uh, no, the devil's not real. I mm-hmm. think there's still a part of people that think it might be. Think it might be real, and yeah. are just yeah. like, just in case, I'm not gonna touch that. Yeah. It, right. Yeah. The, it's the, basis in Christian theology is part of for for an audience that's largely Christian mm-hmm. is part of what makes it so terrifying. Yeah. Um. I mean, like that spider walk, which was not even in the original, right? It was added later. That was a special edition, a special edition thing. But like, Go- I almost called it a goof, and I realized it wasn't a goof. <laughs> it was not a. It was definitely not a goof. <laughs> yeah, it was, no. But it was like she like, accidentally <laughs> walked backwards down the stairs. Yeah, that's a blooper. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, fun fact: a lot of that, a lot of the bloopers made it into the original cut. <laughs> the cross thing. Right. Gag. Oh my god. <laughs> The cross gag. I mean, the no pu- one's puking, obviously. <laughs> yeah, no, she didn't mean to puke. Right. <laughs> Repossessed. A funny, a fun version of Exorcist. Have you seen that before? No. Wait. What is Leslie that? Leslie Nielsen's is in Repossessed. You never oh seen God. Repossessed? No, I've never fun. seen it. But um, Linda Blair was in that. Yes, she is in it. Which yeah. is so sad. Yeah. And is that? It's like doesn't feel. I guess it is like an eighties movie. Yeah. It's it's around the time of of Airplane. Nick is looking. It wait. Up. So this was pre Naked Gun. Is it is it pre? Oh, you know what? Maybe it is pre Naked Gun. Because I mean, that, I'm just trying to think of the timeline. I remember they did a no 1990. Wait, so that Repossessed was, is 1990. Yeah, so that was oh wow, that's probably way just than I after. Thought. Ned Beatty's in it. You gotta watch it, Weiger. Oh man, I gotta, I gotta check this out. No, Put it on your list. Okay. There's a song that's like Repossessed. It's like a like a 90s rap song that starts it. I feel like. Um, so I have some exciting news. I'm uh-huh. going to be in Repossessed 2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. I, I, would, I would be there. I would be the first in line. Uh, um, sorry, I got sucked in. This is, I shouldn't open this tab. I got sucked in. Oh, Nick Leslie is now Nielsen's. watching Repossessed. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's scary. Uh, You're scared of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Leslie Nielsen's IMDb. It was, it was hot on the heels of... Uh, Naked of, Gun of Naked Gun Naked Gun 88 and then he went right into a, hmm. he went right into the sequel and then this was then he had like this re- big spoofs run later in his career Dracula Dead and Loving It Spy yes. Hard Wrongfully Weird. Accused he was the spoof 
Spook he was a Spook, he was, a Spook he was a serious actor at one point, and then it was funny to put the the uh, the the Zuckers right with, mm-hmm. were like, oh, they cast their movies with like very serious actors, yeah, which was good. It was which a, was good. It, yeah, it was a good move. It's very funny. It he's paid super off. funny. Um, yeah. you know, he's great. I love Leo, Leslie Nielsen. May he rest in rest peace. in peace. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, so my question so, is sorry I'd never seen it before I booked you never pilot. yes you never seen it yeah and then I got the pilot mm-hmm. and was like well well okay first of all I got the pilot I've been in LA for years uh-huh. trying to do this trying to get a pilot that's the goal of course yes <laughs> um and your family knows like or my family like is supportive and knows how hard I've worked and like wanted to do this for a long time uh-huh. so you always want to like make the call to your mom and right. whoever to be like I did it you know and I called my mom like really excited I was like I booked it I booked the exorcist and she goes Oh no! <laughs> Why did it have to be this? <laughs> that was her Aww. immediate reaction, and so yeah, so that was uh, that it's, was fun. It's funny though because I feel like it should like <laughs> like something like that is like oh it's it's kind of saying that there is a god and you know what I right. mean like the, yeah. the existence of a devil. Well, yeah, means that there's a god. But right, that's that the heroes I, are the the people of faith, the yes. men of faith. Yeah, I was like, yeah, we're not rooting for the devil. The show is not like Hail Satan. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and I had to call my Nana and be like, uh, yeah. Um, so I booked the show. And it's, you know, it's about spiritual warfare. It's good versus evil. We're rooting for the good guys. Right. And they, they kind of came around. Um, but yeah, they were always very like uh, mellow about how excited it was it sort of put a damper on it. yeah <laughs> that's, that's something that's that, i mean that so thanks uh that's supposed to be a, that's a big moment right yeah yeah, yeah. can i can I ask a quick uh, christian upbringing question oh yeah how was the communion wine and wafers at your church oh we didn't super do that i went okay. to like a kind of weird i mean okay oops um <laughs> <laughs> non-traditional right. uh, church in Georgia, which was good, I think, and bad. I don't know, or not bad, just like different. Like I tell mm. people about my experience now and they're like, wait, what? Um, but it was one of those churches. You weren't handling snakes or anything. Ca- borderline. Wow. Like, wow. Uh, like nobody had snakes, but it was that kind of vibe, like raising hands, people fainting, mm. or we, it was called slain in the spirit. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it was the Oh, I did not know tam- this about you. Tambourines, <laughs> uh, uh, ribbon dancing flags. It was like the whole night. A big band. That was it? In, was it in a tent? No, it was. Okay. It was in a in a church, but almost like one of those like mega church type. Like it didn't look mm. like a church. There wasn't really a steeple or anything. I mean, there was a cross out front, but it was kind of. It was more modern. Yeah, we had a the children's church had. There was this place called Discovery Zone in Macon, which was kind of like a shitty Chuck E. Cheese. Okay. Oh, I know Discovery Zone. Yeah, that's okay. like a chain, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, when they went bankrupt, we got the Discovery Zone like thing in our children's church. Like it was oh, a wow. whole... Yeah. So you so, had like a ball pit and yeah, everything. Yeah, we had like a ball pit and like big slides and like whatever. And, and our church was like pretty... Especially for a small town in Georgia, it was like very... I don't know. It was interracial, mm-hmm. and which is, I think, rare, sadly. And uh, people were pretty lax. Like, you got to wear jeans. Cool. There was, like, gay couples at our church. Mm-hmm. And, like, it was pretty... That's pretty progressive. Pretty progressive yeah. for, for, for Georgia. That's so, cool. Right. We did do communion sometimes, like, on Easter. Okay. And it was always just, like, grape juice and the traditional, like, little... Crackers, right? Yeah, because yeah. that's what I like. Because I was raised Episcopalian, and it's it's oh. very much like cat. Like it's just it's an Anglican church in America, so it's essentially Catholicism with the same amount of pageantry. Not it's not the Catholic Church, but it's the same sort of ceremony. Yeah, and the communion. I like. I remember I hated communion because the wine like tasted like wine, and I didn't want anything yeah. to do with it. Mm-hmm. But then I went to my friend's church where we would have our Boy Scout troop meetings, and they just had straight up grape juice for mm-hmm. their communion, and mm. I was like, this is fucking great. No. I dated a guy, my boyfriend in high school was Episcopalian, Mm -hmm. and really up until that point, I had never been to another church, so I didn't Mm -hmm. know that mine was unusual. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And then, and so I went from like that, people like losing their minds in the aisles with tambourines and flags and wearing jeans to an Episcopalian church, which is very much like Catholic church. very stuffy, yeah. And it was insane. And then they were like, communion comes and you have to like 
get out of your seat and like go to the front, which was horrifying to me. I was like, Ugh. Uh, and, you got to stand up in front of everybody. Yeah, right. I, like I didn't know what I was doing, and they're, they're saying they're like repeating stuff back, and I was just like, oh, say yes. The body, <laughs> the body of Christ, amen. and then you have to say amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, you got to put your hands in a certain yeah, way. Yeah, cross your hands like a weirdo. Like, if, you, if that's if you just want to take, which I always thought was weird. If you don't yes. want to use your hands, you can just the priest will put they the put wafer right into your mouth, but you can put it in. That can be put into your hand. Yeah. Yeah, I had are, we, put- are we gonna are we gonna rate uh, uh, the body of Christ on Doughboys at some point? We should. I give it five forks. I give it five forks too. <laughs> Hell yeah! I mean, God yeah! <laughs> Hail Satan! Hey! Oh. <laughs> um, when when you when you gave confession at your mm-hmm. church, we didn't um, do that at my church though either. All right, so sorry. just for the sake of this. Okay. Um, okay. If, when you gave confession oh, at your I see, church I see, I see, I see. Okay. and the priest forgave you, did uh, a panel open up and you fall into a ball pit? <laughs> yes. I got, right, perfect. fun fact, I got baptized in a ball pit. Oh, yeah, I should have said that. Oh, well. It's okay. I, they did, we also did baptisms like in a lake in Macon. Oh, that's, that's cool. badass. There, it was like very, I don't know, it's so, it's funny. I got, we also had one of those like baptismal like tubs above the church it was just like kind of a bathtub basically right. um and they did that which and they dunk you it yeah. was like i'm into thing. that i'm into the full like i i like just like the full body immersion just like straight up dunking mm-hmm. I'll, I'll dunk you in a leg if you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> let's all go right now <laughs> rebaptized um so i wanted to say that that the exorcist is a very it, there's something about that movie that's like there's something about the 70s and also like the way films were made and film stock and the way it looks that is makes those movies insanely creepy to me and in, mm-hmm. in so many different ways and realistic. Sure. And especially about that, like before, you know, I feel like with technology, it, it, it I feel like technology kind of takes like the fear out of that sort right. of thing more or whatever. But like in, like in The Exorcist, that movie is horrifying. It's a very, very scary movie. But it's also known to have a lot of cr- creepy things happening on set. Yes. So did anything creepy happen with you? No. Well, okay. I will. I, I think part of the reason why so many creepy things happened on set was because it was the 70s yeah. and there were no laws to protect people. <laughs> there was no unions. Right. <laughs> so I think a lot of people were just like tired and dropped lights and shit caught on fire. That's mm. my sort of... Uh, rationale for like why so much stuff went wrong but there was a weird thing where like the set burnt down and ev- everywhere except for her room so oh, wow. there was some kind of things you can't explain I don't know um, but did you did you hear all of, like did they tell you all about this stuff yeah of course yeah. yeah and then on on the first week of shoot and my my family's horrified for me and my soul right. and my yeah, safety yeah, of course. also well, they're just like I mean very like I wasn't nervous of course like uh-huh. doing this and then they kind of scared me i mean uh, it's in a way like yeah. like not in, not that i thought like oh i don't know i just was it was weird it was just like a weird did they have vibe. You, did they have you listen to any exorcist tapes exorcism tapes no but i did no. on my own yeah. just to kind of see because i don't know i wanted i don't know i want to do my research of course like yeah good, good actor um uh, I don't know. I was just like pretending to be Meryl Streep for a minute and was like, I'm going to do this. Even Nobody mm-hmm. asked me to. Or, or, <laughs> I don't even know if it helped, but I was just like, I'm going to look up some videos. And and those were horrifying. The one the one that's like, um, I'm pretty sure she was just like schizophrenic and then they starved her. Um, and it was, mm. and, but I forget the case, um, but it's like the most famous one. It's like, what's Emily Rose is based on and okay. whatever. But, and they oh, have yes. video of it and mm-hmm. photos of her. And and it's horrifying. Yeah. It's truly like it that that freaked me out. So I think I was just like watching stuff like that and more like, am I gonna go crazy? <laughs> then like, is the devil gonna mess with me? Um uh yeah. And and also there was like rational people being like, I saw I'm gonna call him out on this podcast, I don't know if you listen to it, but I saw Ryan Gall right before I left and he apparently studied demonology in school wow, like that was world? like his major I know I know and he was like they, a- they allow that <laughs> <laughs> what 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 school did he go to? I don't know. I majored in, uh, also, in troll studies. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of our listeners major in troll studies. They give you and me a hard time, oh, boy. Nick. In my Twitter mentions, PhD. yeah. 
Uh, no, but I saw him like, and also this, I don't know him well enough to know if he was, he could have told, this all could be a joke, but he was like, right before I left, he was like, get a crystal. <laughs> Like, get a crystal. I'm like, oh, uh, okay. Like, I don't know. Um, Four years of demonology, <laughs> and his advice is get a crystal. I feel, yeah, I feel like you can pick that up in a one day seminar. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a catch all solution. <laughs> I mean, he failed. I right. think he failed his classes. <laughs> um, no, but I, it was a weird thing. We were staying in a new hotel, a newer hotel in Chicago when we were shooting. This is mm-hmm. literally the only, like, kind of weird story. Um, and so it didn't have creepy vibes. There were people staying in like older, an old, older hotel mm-hmm. and they were scared, I think. Um, and the hotel took me to the 13th floor one time without pressing it. Ooh. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, I must have, maybe I drank too many Sazeracs and I pushed it and I forgot. So I like went to my regular floor. I pushed like whatever. Sazeracs? What yeah, the, that was, sounds like devil juice if that you ask was me. Devil juice. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was weirdly like the drink in Chicago. Everybody was drinking those. I don't know. It's a great cocktail. Yeah. You have a Sazerac. I've never had. I've not only have I not had a Sazerac. I've never heard of a Sazerac. This is. The I truth. hadn't either. I hadn't either until then, and then I pretended like I knew what it was, and and. It's a booze drink. It's yeah, boo- it's very boozy. Ooh, okay. Natalie loves a Sazerac. She'll have a Sazerac all the time. It feels. She'll fix herself a Sazerac. <laughs> She probably drinks a lot of them, this, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, podcast is sponsored by Sazerac. <laughs> um, no, but I, uh, yeah, so that happened. And then, like, it, uh, I was on set, like, a couple days later. And, and the girl who played my sister, Brienne, on the show, she was like, a weird thing happened last night. Like, the elevator took me to the 13th floor. And I was like, oh. <gasps> Whoa. That happened scary. to me. Scary. And uh I yeah, so it happened it happened to her and then I was like, weird. And then it happened like several times after that. And then was like some guy and at the hotel like, sorry, there's gotcha. a malfunction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um But that guy was the devil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean I have a photo on my phone. I it took me to the thirteenth floor one night and I took a photo like and the devil of thirteen is there. and the devil is in the photo. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what's weird about because like, I think a lot of hotels don't even have a thirteenth yeah, floor. Yeah. Mm. So that in and of itself is a little spooky. Mm-hmm. There's an old movie called, the, I think, the 13th floor, where it's like a satanic cult. Oh, right. Lives mm-hmm. on the 13th floor, but like the 13th floor is like boarded up. They, mm-hmm. Like it, no one is supposed to live on that floor. I don't oh. know. I love all those 70s horror yeah. devil movies. I well, love that- the omission of 13 from things. Like in Santa Monica, there's mm-hmm. no 13th Street. There's 14th what? Street. Then there's Euclid. Then there's 12th Street. I think they, ah, that's great. That just everyone's just like a little Scared super. Everyone's a little, I 13. like 13. I'm not afraid Scared of 13. Yeah, me neither. 666, the number, that, that number though, that's spooky to me. No, thank you. You. No. I'll skip right over that. <laughs> <laughs> I just got recently got a new phone number and there was like they generate it randomly mm-hmm. and the first one that was generated was like 310666. Oh no. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. No, no, no. And I was like, "No, nah, that's too on the nose." And one time You know, you know how many people probably uh incorrectly uh call up the <laughs> devil? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'd get a lot of requests, like wrong numbers, asking for hexes. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hello. Is this Marilyn Manson's house? <laughs> <laughs> Can so, you connect uh, me to Twiggy Ramirez? <laughs> oh, God damn it! Uh, Who else do you have? Uh, just those two. <laughs> um, now, now, watch this segue, Nick. <clears throat> okay. Now, you had to have. Did you have to have a lot of makeup on at some point? I did. Mm, those are early call times, huh? Oof, yeah. I was. What time? What was your earliest call time? <laughs> I don't even know, but I was definitely the first one there and the last one to leave. Oh, I mean, me funny. and my makeup so, artist. When oh, it's yeah. really that early, okay, uh, here we go. how do you deal with things? <laughs> Say a cup of coffee. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Whoa. Wow, that's good. I honestly didn't see that coming. Mm-hmm. It was like, here's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I get the spirit of what you were doing. Uh It was a fair transition. Mm -hmm. You took about like five more sentences than it required. (laughs) It also required I was not helping you at all because I didn't know that that's what you were going for. Yeah, you had to keep bulldozing over our guest. 
Well, that's I do that anyways. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my bad. Uh, no, not at all. I need to finish the rest of my ice blended. That's right. Mm. So hold on. Okay. Now you're you're where where did you shoot? When? Where? W- where? Oh, Chicago. Chicago. Okay. Yeah. Are there coffee beans up in Chicago or no? There's not. I mm. think there's there's starting there's some that are popping up in airports around. Like I think there's yeah, one okay. in the Atlanta airport now. But it used to be just Starbucks. Like, I didn't even know what Coffee Bean was Mm -hmm. until I moved to L.A. So why Coffee Bean, like, why is that a place you wanted to discuss as opposed to, say, a Starbucks? Well, I like it better than Starbucks. Whoa, okay. Yep. I'll go on the record. Guess what? I'll go on the record, too. I also like it better than Starbucks. Yep. Well, before, I was like, Starbucks is it. When I was in Georgia, I was like, oh, yeah, this is the fanciest drink. Uh And I felt... I would. There was one um, in my town that got there like the f- last year that I was in high school. We got a mm-hmm. Starbucks, and that we thought like, "Oh yeah, we're cool now," yeah. and we'd like go there to study and stuff. Um, <laughs> and I thought like the sign of of being cool. <laughs> yes, I was <laughs> going to <the> Starbucks <laughs> to study. Let's go hit well, the books. <laughs> yeah, I was very cool. This is a, a fun side story. Uh, one time, my parents were out of town. My mom and my stepdad were out of town. And um, they came home early, and there was a bunch of cars in the driveway, and they were like, she's having a party. And they were like, going to bust me, and they came in, and my chemistry class was over, and we were all studying, and my mom and stepdad were just like, oh, oh, hey, guys. And then they said they had to run to their bedroom so they could burst out laughing. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so I was... Pretty cool. That's great. Yeah. By, by the way, I wanted to just say that you and I went on the record as oh, yeah. having a co- a coffee bean that we like it better than Starbucks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nick moved his head towards the mic. <laughs> I saw that the moment has passed. And so opened I, his mouth and then shut his mouth. I held my fire because the moment had passed. What is, your, what is this, this fire? Give me fuel. Give me fire. Yeah. It's a Metallica song. I know. We, we've established that that is the one band you seem to like. Do you know Trigger, your, Trigger Ramirez uh, auditioned for Metallica? I mean, in some kind of, kind of monster, they have like all the other bassists who are, are uh, going to replace Jason Newstead, oh, wow. and he's one of them. <laughs> oh, no I was way. like, oh, that's cool. That's an interesting what if. What if that had happened? That is that is, that is interesting. Anyway. Um, <laughs> he's, he's stalling. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh-huh. I was like, should I say this now, or should Uh-oh. I save it for my evaluation? Oh, okay. well, what do you think? I also think Coffee Bean is better than Starbucks. Whoa! <laughs> they are basically wow. the same thing, but if you ask me to make a decision, I will go Coffee Bean. Can I, okay. can I say something? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You should have saved it for your final evaluation. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I'm, I'm on the record as not loving coffee. I, You know, like we were talking about set, uh, we made that segue, which is a very mm-hmm. good segue about how <laughs> you need coffee on set when you're getting the makeup. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, I... I that is like the one time when I'm extremely tired and I have to be awake. I'll chug coffee, but I don't love it too much. I, I've said this before: the 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 when I'm tired and I like try to un like wake myself up unnaturally, mm-hmm. I get like a a rush and I get anxiety. It doesn't work right. well for me. Yeah. So I so I don't drink coffee too too often. I do drink it. I I, I don't not drink it. But if I do, I want like a, a small black coffee, usually from Dunkin' mm-hmm. Donuts, something that doesn't get me too wired. Yeah, I mean, for me, since I moved, basically from the point where I moved from the dorms to a, an apartment through the the point in my life I am now, I've been an, a coffee every morning man. Like mm-hmm. I, I wake up and I have coffee, like either I, either brew so- I usually just brew something, or I go out and get something. And like it's every day, even if I'm like out of town, I'm like I'm going down to that hotel lobby or I'm going to the nearby Starbucks. I need to start my day with a cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about you, Hannah? Are you a frequent coffee morning drinker? Or what's your routine? Yes, I am. I am not a morning person uh-huh. at all. That's an that's a huge understatement. Also, <laughs> why, why is that? What are, what are we I'm, talking here? I'm just perpetually lazy. I mean, I mm-hmm. could sleep. I could sleep till noon yeah. every oh, wow. day, and no problem. Hmm. I mean, no problem. Hannah, hell is, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, I. It's weird. I don't know. I just. I stay up late and I can sleep late, and mm. uh, it's kind of embarrassing as an adult. It's not okay to like. Be Let like, me tell you, I, I know that day late. I know that very well. I know that feeling very well. And you, I, you know, I've read into it, and some people just have different clocks. Nick, yes. people do have different. Inter- Actually, I have in an, an internal clock which is more calibrated towards a two a.m. to 10, 10 a.m. sleep mm. cycle. Mm. But I've just sort of like gradually. 
forced yourself. I've gradually this. forced myself to now. I'm a, I'm a guy who like wakes up on his own at like six thirty or seven. I think two a.m. to ten a.m. is by eleven. I may even be three a.m. to eleven a.m. That's yeah, you me. Might be. Yeah. That's me. I think I'm three a.m. to eleven a.m. Which yeah. is is I don't know maybe bad but maybe also fine. I don't know. Yeah. It it does run to a problem when I'm like making appointments for stuff or like trying to get meetings with people and they're like, could you do like nine thirty? And I'm like. Ah, like yeah. shoot! I've got you know what? I have something else at that time. But you know what? It's it's good to do that. Like I like that as opposed to being unrealistic and being like, yeah, I could make this eight a.m. thing. No, yeah, I don't even try. Right. And if it's my friend, I'm like, I've had friends who are like, let's get coffee or let's get breakfast or come to this class or workout mm-hmm. thing and I'm just like to be honest I am not gonna make it mm-hmm. you know I'm, even if I say I'm gonna do it now I'm not I'm gonna right. fall asleep yep. there's no way I, I I gotta take a bite out of schedule making because <laughs> in this city Nick <laughs> yes I've talked to you about this before meetings are always scheduled for like 10 30 mm-hmm. or 10 mm-hmm. and then also on the other end, like 3.30 or 4 or 5. Right. These are intense, insane traffic hours in the yeah. city. And that's also like to LA, just like the rush hour lasts so long. It lasts so fucking... Schedule there's, there's the really, damn meetings at 1 p.m. for God's is, sake. Mm-hmm. Then that go, that falls into the lunch gap, yeah, that's which a, is like 12 to don't 2. Don't take a fucking hour lunch. <laughs> I know, insane. I agree with you. I think, that's, I think they should do yeah. more, more things around that time because that makes everyone's life easier, but that's just mm-hmm. not how things are scheduled. You know how my dad got lunch? He went and walked and got a fucking the same turkey uphill. sandwich it was uphill <laughs> right it was boston uh not bunker hill but yeah. he was in the boston commons and mm. he would walk and get a turkey sandwich for himself every fucking day right god damn it we gotta relax with these lunch or uh, have it you know what schedule it at two right after lunch right why not? Yeah. That's great. Hey, how about, hey, uh, you're an agent at UTA. How about brown bagging it? Instead yeah. of taking your 90-minute sojourn to the Ivy, buddy. Yeah. No shit. Pieces of shit. <laughs> also, hey, sign us. Yeah, please yeah. represent um, me. <laughs> <laughs> we take it all back. Uh. But yeah, no, I, I, I get what you're saying. Uh huh. It's, it's very frustrating. That is frustrating. That's a thing unique to LA. But but it does that does tend to happen. And I think it, I I like that you're realistic about what your sleep schedule is because that's a thing, problem I have sometimes. I'm too ambitious. I'll be like, oh, I'll go to the dentist at seven thirty or eight a.m. <laughs> on a day when I'm not working because I'll just like I'll get it done first thing and then and you bring it over to Doughboys. You know that? Yeah. What's that? Me being late all the time is your fault. That's not my. <laughs> wait a minute. Uh huh. It's the truth. You're a man who we're recording this on May twenty. 20- May 22nd, May 23rd, May 23rd. Uh-huh. We're recording this May 23rd. You just did your taxes today. <laughs> okay. I also did my taxes for the previous year and last year uh, recently. So, hell yeah. We... Hannah, what the hell? Why are you? Why are we alike? What? I never heard. I mean. This is strange. You guys yeah. are fashionably late. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's a we. It's. Look, I don't have to rush and get them in in April. Right. <laughs> give me that October deadline. <laughs> yes. Send them by the deadline. <laughs> give me the... You can, you can do it. You can also, push to October. I heard that you're less likely to get audited if you do that. If you push it to October? Yeah. I don't want to be audited. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. But then again, October is a spooky month. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> you know, out there, if you have... Uh, if you're someone who's late all the time, hashtag fashionably late. And if you're someone who's early all the time, hashtag... Early nerd. Loser nerd. <laughs> yeah, hashtag yeah. early nerd, loser nerd. <laughs> early nerd, loser nerd. <laughs> uh, I become something of an early nerd. I used to be a guy, I used to be a late comer. I would be late to a lot of things. You would be late to stuff? Yeah, I was like chronically late to things for what, a long time. W- when I knew you, even? Yeah. How did a, you fix it? Um, I grew up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I sort of realized that I just sort of, I, I actually have a lot of sleep issues. And mm-hmm. so I've seen a number of neurologists and sleep specialists for and worked on that. And so I've gotten to a point where I can sleep consistently. Mm-hmm. So that actually, that's actually the biggest thing. I can fall asleep consistently when I need to sleep. So that means that I, because my body just needs seven or eight hours of sleep. If I try to wake up after four hours, I just sleep through. My, my trainer life. was yeah. talking about this the other day, how he gets five or six. I'm like, no, I no, can't, no. I cannot I, function. Five, oh. I can, I can function for the day but i'm like this sucks yeah, yeah. and six okay but give me eight, i want eight, eight full yes. hours of sleep yes i feel like i need like nine yeah. i feel like even with eight it's like not quite enough yeah, yeah. like when i sleep in i'll do nine or ten damn mm-hmm. yeah yeah i could sleep for ten hours easy yes i mean in college and stuff i would i feel like i would do ten to oh, twelve sometimes. every day yeah. yeah all of my classes i never scheduled a morning class in college it was always afternoon yeah 
and it's very smart. Yeah. My friends were like, well, I'm like, what are you doing taking that AM lecture? You're never going to make that. Yeah. Yeah. No way. You fall asleep. I, can't, I just can't function in the morning. My yeah. stomach mm-hmm. will grumble. I'll be hungry. That's why I need to eat or have, you know, what? a cup of coffee. <laughs> I had to. So you asked earlier mm-hmm. why I picked coffee bean. And yes. I'll get to that now. <laughs> Finally, I've been trying to get it in. No. Um, but I, I, when I moved to L.A. from Georgia, uh, coffee bean was my first job. Oh wow! Yeah, so I worked there, and it uh, my I had to be there sometimes. I had to be at work at four thirty because Christ. we opened at five, and it was bad. I yeah. remember we, how we said all that stuff about me not being a morning person and not being able to get up early. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was the probably the worst job I could have had. Yeah. That sounds brutal. And I was bad at it. Were you, Were you ever like a oh I'll just try to stay up all night and come in and then just change my sleep schedule? Or? I did that one time. Yes, yeah. I like. I'd first I'd moved here and like was hanging out with some people that I I can't remember it was like family friends were in town or something or like uh-huh. there were people in town and they were like we're going out and like come out meet with us and I did and had the idea of like yeah I'm just gonna stay up I think I right. slept for like an hour maybe thirty minutes Dude. went to work and it was it was rough yeah that's rough I made a lot of wrong drinks that oh day. right and like also, yeah you gotta kind of be you gotta be with it when you're when you got that job you gotta you gotta yes. be yeah you gotta be on top of things. no I was it was really bad I like <laughs> burned my hands a lot yeah. Jesus Christ <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> One time, the viewers can't see, but there, she basically has skeleton hands. Yeah, there's no flesh or yeah, blood no. on her hands. That's why I got uh, the Exorcist. <laughs> my hands. Yeah, that's why they do that. And when they ask you to slate in auditions, they should show us your hands. And mm-hmm. I did that, and they're like, "That's our girl. <laughs> that's our girl. That's it." <laughs> they, they were like, "Stop right there. We don't even need to see anything else. You've got the part." I've had, I've had, I've had both ends of the spectrum uh, with jobs where I've had. Uh, uh, when I was a garbage man, mm-hmm. I mean, in some ways, I'm still a garbage <laughs> man. Um, but a, 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 a rubbish collector, I yes. guess you could say. Uh, when I when I when I when I worked that job, it was we changed to be the, to five a.m. It started, mm. and we were collecting garbage at five right. a.m. And that was bad. That's bad, a- bad news. And then I, I then I worked. Well, go ahead, Nick. No, no, no. Go for it. And then when I worked at the Snake Pit here on Melrose as a, as a doorman, you were a bar bouncer. I was a bar bouncer. Oh. Uh, and I did that for a very, it was literally one day a week. This is like one of my first jobs in LA when yeah. I was just like trying to get any work that I could. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then like I would be home at like three and be like wired and stay up to like four or five in the morning, like in the morning. Yeah. And then I turned into kind of like, it was like a vampire, you know what I mean? Right, like, right, and right. Then I, would, yeah. then I would sleep till like past noon or something. Yeah, cause your body just adapts mm-hmm. to that, and you just end up being completely off the off everyone's schedule. Yeah, but Mitch, knowing you were a bar bouncer at one point makes me want to challenge bar bouncers. <laughs> <laughs> Because you're such a you're a physically imposing man, and if mm-hmm. I didn't know you, I'd be afraid of you. But knowing who you are, I I realize I could just like tickle your sides, and you like shrink, <laughs> shrink like a violet. <laughs> um, no, I, I I get what you're saying, and those early morning jobs are hard. And that's my my mindset is because I you'll, I'll sometimes like oh I got to be at work by six a.m. I'll stop at a Starbucks. I'll stop at a coffee place on the mm-hmm. way, and I always try to be conscious of like okay this barista who is serving me had to get up <laughs> earlier than me, yeah. and they have to work right now. So well, like you're nice because most people did not think that and right. were very mean to me. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I imagine because a lot of people are cranky in the morning, yeah. and then so you're you're super tired, yeah. and someone's cranky because they're up early, so they're mad at this person yeah. who's trying to help them. Mm-hmm. It's, it's but baristas, like I, I'm trying to think of like the the jobs where where people are the meanest to people. And even though there's been a lot of issues with airlines lately, mm-hmm. I feel like flight attendants get a ton of shit. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like like I, I yeah. I, I, just, I, I flew to New York this past week. People are rude. Yeah. And I just witnessed you know like uh, on that flight alone, I, I flew first class, which I never fly. Not to brag, Ooh. I never ever ever fly it, but. I was shocked by some of the people in first class being like so. The guy in front of me was so insanely rude, right? Ugh. That I was just like, I I couldn't believe a human being was talking to someone else that way. It's crazy, and and, and I feel like uh, I feel like probably baristas are 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 
probably maybe maybe be- below flight attendants as far as how much rudeness they get, but it's it's close. I yeah, because the volume of customers you're dealing with, and you're dealing mm-hmm. with people who are maybe sleepy or, or craving cranky. Caffeine they or want cranky, their yeah. co- coffee, and then right. if you get it wrong, they're pissed off. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. I think I feel like that's got to be a highly abused profession. I'm trying I to think of what else. What other service? I mean, workers waiter, any kind yeah, of waiters, like waiter, certainly. Yeah, waiter. Yeah, waiter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, bus drivers, I feel like probably have to. I, I mean, when I've been on the bus, I've I've definitely encountered some bus drivers <laughs> have to deal with some unruly passengers. Uh, that yeah. can't be fun. Podcast hosts, podcast hosts, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but, but I I uh, I don't function in the morning. Like before, I'm not I'm not a fully formed human being mm-hmm. past. Or before 11 a.m. Yeah. And even like 11 to 12, it's iffy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. I get that. Yeah. I don't know. And also like being an actor, that's bad because I have to be up early. You got to be up on at 5, and, 6 a.m. You might be have to have uh, to be acting. And yeah. 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 And I don't, I mean, I'm, I can't be good. I right. can't be doing a good job. <laughs> like when I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just like pounding coffee and uh, yeah. <laughs> Mitch, we just, I made drinks wrong. Uh, yeah, coffee. right. Exactly. Like I, I, my brain was just like, nope. <laughs> yeah, and if you're in a situation where you, you know, you had to be up for uh, like for like a four thirty makeup call or whatever, and Oof. then you have to get to be on set at six a.m. and you have these mm-hmm. lines you're supposed to memorize, and you worked a thirteen hour day the previous yeah. day, like your brain's just going to be shot. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was, I was, uh, I was dead, mostly dead. <laughs> yeah, I get that, Nick. What, what were you going to say to me? I was going to say we should start recording this podcast at six a.m. <laughs> God damn it. You say that as a joke, but then also I I could see you off air being like, it actually logically makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) That's not a bad idea. (laughs) We can go to the restaurant at 4.30 a.m. and then we can go to your house and kicks. (laughs) We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back with more Doughboys. Welcome back to Doughboys. We're here with Hannah Kasolka talking about the coffee bean and tea leaf. So you you used to work at Coffee Bean. Mm Mm-hmm. While you were there, did you develop an affection, uh, an affection for the drinks, or was it is it is it later as a patron? At what point were you like, this is better than star, this is better than Starbucks to me? Well, so when I when I got the job, they you have to like learn the menu one mm. and learn all this stuff about the beans and the coffee, and then they do all these tests. Like you're supposed to try Ooh, a bean test. Are you a kidding bean me? Test, yes. <laughs> They give you a bean test? Yeah, I had to get like certified and stuff. Wow, wow. Yes. That is crazy. Is crazy? (laughs) But they also, they made you try. It was very, like, our, the manager at this coffee bean was very intense. And Mm. it was like, he treated it like we were working at the finest coffee shop. Mm. Uh Uh-huh. Um... Which I guess is like kind of how you have to. I don't know. He took his job right. very seriously. Yeah. I mean, at one point it was kind of like you know it started yeah. off as like this kind of like gourmet artisan. Like, yeah. oh wow, a place that serves gourmet coffee. That thing I get at the diner. You know, it yeah. was, right, it was right, a right. curiosity at one point. Yeah, it was the start of like, yeah, kind of like a higher end right thing. So, which is now there's been there has been like a coffee house explosion. What in the last? Yes. Seven years or so. It's been a while now. Right. But but like they're like these little coffee shops around LA, which what was what's the one around Sunset Bend there? Intelligentsia. Intelligentsia kind of was I feel like the mm-hmm. start I don't even know how old Intelligentsia is. It might be even like be as old as coffee yeah. bean or whatever. Yeah. But it's those sorts of places it's like, oh, high end, super fancy coffees. Right. Mm-hmm. That make coffee beans seem like trash. Trash. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of yes. I mean, yes. True. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's kind of how I feel now. Because mm-hmm. I've I've graduated. I've like moved from star I've really learned a lot in the in over the years. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> No, but like now I would I would take uh like blue bottle or go get them tiger over uh, ah, yes. of course. Yeah. Although blue bottle's great. Yeah. Hannah, Just, we ahead. know that you learned a lot of things about beans, mm-hmm. but guess what? Mm-hmm. We have a surprise bean test for you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, uh, my manager's here. <laughs> <laughs> I got fired also from coffee. Bean did you really? Test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, did, you, did you, was there a pop, <laughs> pop quiz bean test? Yes, yeah, pop quiz. <laughs> no, I, uh, well, when I first got the job, I didn't have an agent. I didn't even have a car when mm. I first got the job. I, I literally had like a suitcase 
with t-shirts and pants in it and in a home hopefully and no no, 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 no okay no, no literally at the time i was sleeping on someone's couch wow <laughs> wow so that's the start of a movie yes started... did you did you move here with all the muppets <laughs> yes, yes yeah, you yeah, packed yeah. a suitcase with <laughs> t-shirts <laughs> i was like it's la i just need sunglasses and t-shirts yeah, you're right you're right <laughs> um no i i i mean i truly had nothing yeah yeah. I didn't know anybody besides these people. I knew the people I sleep on their couch. Mm. Um, but oh, I they hope were, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were uh, they were like family friends. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't it wasn't even like they were we were that close right. or whatever. I mean, I'd known them for years. They've been friends with our family, but they were like a little bit older than me and so I had no like no friends, no car, no Man. home. Uh, and and yeah, and so I didn't. Have, I definitely didn't have an agent at the time. So yeah. when I started working Coffee Bean, I told them like, "Yeah, I moved here to be an actor," and they were like, eh, "Okay." Um, and I was like, "But I don't have an agent, but you know, I want to. I want to be able to go on auditions like when I get one. Mm -hmm. So if you guys could schedule me either the four thirty to ten thirty shift, or the like seven to ten shift or whatever you. PM. Yeah. Oh, seven to ten PM. Okay. PM. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was. I was like that. But in the meantime, I can work anytime. Mm -hmm. So, and that was for like a few months. But I think they kind of thought like, she's not going to get an agent <laughs> or she's not going to do like everybody's. Right. Wanted yeah, to be I'm sure. Guy. I mean, they, they see a lot of people yeah. who come here trying to do the same thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I was just like very naive and, and I, well, I thought I would get one like way sooner, which that didn't happen. But anyways, I finally got an agent and then started auditioning and mm. they kept scheduling me during the middle of the day yeah and so a couple times i was late um oh and got written up like twice and then i knew i had like one more strike basically mm. and i and i didn't have an offense in like months yeah and then i was at a callback for a commercial which at the time would have been huge uh -huh. it was for clean and clear mm. And it's a skin product. What is that? That is yeah, okay. clean like, and clear and under control. Nick. Yeah. Okay. It's like young girls face wash mm. and boys and boys. But the commercials are always like teenage girls. Basically. Yes. Yeah. Let's just say sometimes I used my <laughs> sister's acne products. Fine, And that's totally. Yeah. Um, uh, it's gender neutral mm. for sure. But uh, they always feature girls in the commercials. That is true. And it's always like the infamous, like that you splash your face with the water. Okay, you, all right. You've seen, so, and we had to do that in the commercial. That was like part of the audition was like really? a fake splash. A live splash. <laughs> No, got... no water, no oh, water. Okay. But as if there were water, and that's oh, weirder. That exactly, is weird. and to this day, that might be the most humiliating thing I've done in an audition. Is a um, fake a fake water splash? A fake water splash to like a refreshed smile. Wow. Um, yeah, but so I was at this audition, and it was also a weird audition because it started off with like tons and tons of girls. Mm -hmm. It was a callback, but there was still a bunch of us, and you'd see like the types. So it'd be like. A bunch of like like ten Asian girls, ten blonde girls, ten redheads, mm -hmm. uh, ten black girls. Like it was all the you know stereotypes, and then they were like matching us up, and you would go in two at a time, mm -hmm. and then the girls would come out, and the casting director in front of everyone, we, we were all in the waiting room, would say like, "Thank you, you can you can go or you stay." Wow, You're ruthless. Yeah. So as the day was getting going on longer the less and less girls were there the w waiting rooms dwindling down it's me and one other blonde girl wow and like one redhead and i'm like i got this like right. or i can't leave yeah basically yeah you can't go that's crazy um and i called coffee bean to like try to get my shift covered told him the deal and at the time too i was like i'm maybe gonna be an hour late mm -hmm. which is bad but also the time that i was working was like not a rush it's not like a morning Thing they could have handled one barista being on, yeah. So I thought they'd be a little more like understanding. <laughs> they weren't, and you got um, fired. You, you, yeah. They just they fired you outright. Yeah. So wow. I was I was the last girl there. I was the last blonde girl, and I was like, I'm getting this because um, commercials pay the big bucks. Then I get to quit this job, right? Mm -hmm. And I show up maybe like 20 minutes late. I wasn't even like as late as I thought I was going to be, and I got fired. <laughs> Wow. At, did they just say, like, go did, home? They were, yeah, basically. Oh, wow. That's crazy. And they were like, um, uh, 
Yeah, they told me to go home, and then I didn't get the commercial. So. Oh no! Wow, what a but, double whammy! <laughs> hey Hannah, a Hollywood double whammy. Hollywood double whammy. <laughs> Classic double whammy. <laughs> yeah. Hannah, I have a question for you. Uh-huh. Uh, how much did you get for selling your life rights to La La Land? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm very mad at Damien Chazelle. <laughs> I'm furious, and we're gonna go to court any day now. <laughs> yeah, truly. I mean, my, it sound it's so cliche, right? Uh, and I don't know how telling that story now. It's insane, right? That one, I'm still here, mm-hmm. <laughs> and also too that it, it conforms to everyone's like. <laughs> preconceptions about what LA is. It's just like, yeah, yeah it's exactly that. There's yeah. a reason those preconceptions exist. Yeah. I, you know, as far as, I don't know if a lot of people know, but they like these cattle call auditions, when I worked mm-hmm. at the Fox lot, I would look, look up my window uh, when I was working at the Simpsons. Yeah. And uh, I would see just like a sea of like, sometimes like, a sea of men who looked like me, right? Yeah. Like waddling into the studio <laughs> and walking to like, mm-hmm. and and there'll be like thousands. Mm-hmm. There'll be so many of these yeah. guys right. who look yeah. like who would look like me or look like any like there. It would be all sorts of different people, but like uh, especially a couple times I saw guys like me, <laughs> and they look so much alike. It's mm-hmm. it's really really cr- there, there's, yeah. It's there's like just, the guys you would pick for a police lineup. Yeah, exactly. To figure it, out the suspect, but, but like. 200 of them right. or something, yeah. yeah. It's crazy to, mm-hmm. to see. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I'd waddle right in with them and <laughs> <laughs> walk to wherever they were going. Yeah. <laughs> follow them to a big food trough. <laughs> it was a trap. <laughs> I, I'm really surprised as someone who was fired, ha- left on bad terms, that mm-hmm. you don't harbor any ill will towards the coffee. Yes, you seem to almost well, like it. You still kind of like well, it. Well, it made me who I am today. Right. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate it. Also, I mean, I'm I everybody. Coffee Bean is kind of my Kevin Bacon. Like mm. everybody I know in LA can be traced back to a person that I met at that Coffee Bean. Oh, okay. Weirdly, what about Weiger and I? Not us. Yeah, you want to know how you meet Kev- Coffee Bean Kevin Bacon? You guys? Sure, please do. So, Are you gonna be like, I met you in Coffee Bean? And we're like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. And yes, and that's yeah, exactly. Earlier today, we were um, at Coffee Bean. <laughs> no, I just met like I I. Met uh, this guy used to come in who was like, I, I don't know, flirting with me and like wanting to take me out on a date. And I was, I was like, no, thanks. But I also knew, knew no one, like literally didn't mm. know a soul. And the family friends were like gone. They'd gone back to Georgia for work because they were here like part time. So I literally knew no one. Uh-huh. And my ex in Georgia, the Episcopalian, had changed his Netflix password. So I didn't even have that. <laughs> and I was like t- truly like eating old bagels from Coffee Bean and like bringing <laughs> tea home. That was like, Jesus, yeah. it was sad. Christ. It's sad. It's <laughs> very sad. sad. Um, but. Like, whatever. I was like, I'm in LA, I'm doing it. But also, I was very sad. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Make no mistake, I was sad. (laughs) Right. Um, (laughs) So I'd come to work, and this guy came in a bunch and was like, "Uh, like, we should hang out, like, blah, blah, blah. And was talking to me, and I was like, "Um, no, thanks. Like, I don't know. And then one day. And that man was Matt Besser. (laughs) (laughs) No, but Matt does go to Coffee Bean, too, weirdly. But I don't know. Long story short, he was like, you got to meet this girl from Georgia. You guys would get along great. And I was like, oh, cool. And so he introduced me to her. And then I hung out with like them as a group once. And then he invited mm-hmm. me to their birthday party. And I that's where I met uh, a friend of mine, Drew, who told me about UCB. Mm-hmm. And then that's how I got in. I started in classes. And, All right. Yeah. We, that, we were successfully, Kevin. I think <laughs> yeah. that is. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's fair. And you um, know what? That's good to hear because when I moved to California, uh, I had a car. And also, mm-hmm. when I got here, I made a bunch of friends like instantly. <laughs> oh, yeah? I was like one of the coolest wow. LA guys there was. Isn't that right, Nick? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I had a reputation as soon as I you could. Were, no, I knew no. I didn't know like, anybody. Yeah, I knew nobody knows anybody, I guess. But the, but I guess it feels, I don't know, I was taking. No, I, that, that first year is, is very oh, desperate. It's awful. And I, like, I, it feels like a wasted year in my head yeah. a lot of the time because I. I didn't know anybody. I no. I hung out with my roommate who I, I it was Craigslist that I met him. Oof, and yeah. we would like on Saturday nights we'd like go to the bar and then go to Seven Eleven and right. come home. <laughs> yeah. It was very it was it was a depressing time. Yeah, I, I was like eating like uh, Del Taco 
like whenever they have like Taco Tuesdays, it's like three for a dollar. Like that Hell was yeah. like a fun treat. Yeah, this is right. not this is not depressing for Weiger anymore. This is right. This What's is, the problem? This, <laughs> this is your best Saturday night. <laughs> I did get Del Taco the other day. I was like, oh man, this is this is sad. <laughs> Come on now. No, uh, I like Del Taco. Uh, don't listen to the rest of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's not like like in my mind. I was like, that was like eating out. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, that was like, that was your fancy. Uh, yeah, yeah, your that restaurant. Was me being oh. fancy. <laughs> no, definitely. <laughs> um, well, let's talk, well, let's talk about coffee bean a little bit. Let's dig in a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, and let's start. I guess maybe you know they're they're a beverage place, they're a coffee mm-hmm. shop, but they do have some food options there. So I guess let's start with the food we had on this latest experience. Sure. I got the jalapeno cheese croissant. I got that a little warmed up. And mm-hmm. I also got myself a chocolate chip cookie. Now, here's the thing. I got my stuff to stay at the one on Hillhurst <laughs> Avenue, the, the coffee bean. That's right. And, uh, uh, right near, right, right near close place. to where I am. It's yeah. like 0. 0.6 miles away. Nick, you don't have to tell them. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you want to find where Mitch yeah. lives, just a 0.6 mile radius, radius of the coffee bean. Yeah, and also if you listen to previous episodes, you know a cross street. They, the street. They, I mean, they almost know where I. I, right. I, I every day I come home, there's a new Doughboys fan on the doorstep. <laughs> um, but yeah, I got the jalapeno cheese croissant, and I got the chocolate chip cookie. Here's the thing: when you get it to stay, they serve it to you on a real plate. Did they do that when you work there? Yes, I yeah. like that a lot. Mm-hmm. That makes me feel like a. I don't know. It just makes me feel great that I'm just getting my food on, like not you know, not in a little sleeve like a little uh-huh. paper sleeve but getting yeah. it on an actual plate it gives a little bit of dignity to sure eating. yeah something that's kind of a a quick bite they'll do that with a drink too they'll put it in a mug i have not experienced that i've only gotten into the to-go and, containers and they have these little fancy clear well in my it, at the time i thought wow this is fancy yeah <laughs> and still do <laughs> um, <laughs> like a a tall clear glass with a handle um, that said coffee bean like on the side, but it, it looked oh. very cute and fancy. Almost oh, like a mug, or, like yeah. a like a tall curvy mug. Oh, that sounds okay. great. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the the croissant I thought was pretty good. I mean, I used to have the jalapeno cheese bagel from Coffee Bean with cream cheese, like basically every day. That was my my. You said this, yeah. That was it. Kind of grossed me out a little bit. It was kind of my it was my everyday breakfast when I worked at, at this video game company that was right across the street from a Coffee Bean. I would just get in every day, get myself a, a jalapeno cream cheese. This bag, is the heavy wire years. It was a little heavier, yeah. This was this was this was in my chubby phase. Yeah, one of my chubby phases. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so I used to have that every morning, and uh, the jalapeno cheese croissant, by contrast, I think was a little better. I like it better because their mm-hmm. their bagels sometimes can get a little chewy. I, I imagine they've just been sitting they're de- there. They're for a while. dense looking. They're very dense. And that croissant uh-huh. I thought was like a little better, and I think it was a better a better pairing for that cheese. And I, I like the jalapeno had a little bit of heat to it, not a ton, but just like a little bit of heat. The chocolate chip cookie was pretty stale i was i was pretty disappointed Ooh. by it and i i kind of wish they didn't offer to warm that one up which i thought was weird i feel like I sh- they should have warmed up that cookie um the best bites of that i had is when i dipped it in my cup of joe but just having it on its own i was like i don't really want to eat this i heard yeah. that there was an issue you went up and you requested your cookie to be okay <laughs> <laughs> no mitch it did not happen are you sure (laughs) yes that's no that's not true all right well that's what you told me before (laughs) um Mitch, you did you also get a jalapeno and cheese croissant? We were in the handholding club because I got a, a jalapeno and cheese croissant. I got a few different things. I, I uh, Hannah was offering to go and buy me it's to buy us coffee bean. And I said, no, no, that's not how it works here on Doughboys. We're going to pick this up for you, right, Nick? Right, we're a full service we're, enterprise. We're delivery men, I basically. Was um, and and. Uh, that's more. You, that's most of our where most of our income comes from. It's from delivering <laughs> del- food to delivering people. Delivering food to people. Yeah. <laughs> and and you, Hannah, you requested something that was kind of funny to me. You requested uh, a, a white chocolate ice blended. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, for people that don't know, the, the coffee bean I think is famous for their ice blendeds. They mm-hmm. supposedly had the ice blended before Starbucks did. That's right. Starbucks mm-hmm. kind of swooped in and, and ripped them off. Mm-hmm. And I, I, well, we can talk about them a little bit more. But you ordered that, and I had never heard of anyone ordering one of those before. The white chocolate the or white the ice chocolate. blended? The, oh, the, the okay. white chocolate ice blended. Okay. Okay. And uh, and I and I so I just grabbed a few different pastries. I I mm-hmm. got in the hand holding club with Nick. I got a, a jalapeno and cheese Danish. Heated it up as well. Croissant. Oh, sorry. Danish, I'm yeah. sorry. Croissant. Mm. Heated that up a little bit as well. Mm. Then I got, I'm sorry, a cheese Danish, uh, just a regular plain cheese Danish. And then I got a, a, a chocolate twist stick or something like that, <laughs> a bakery chocolate twist mm-hmm. stick. It looked like a double helix. I didn't know what exactly it was. It was. It's basically it was just like a long bread stick with cho- that. It, 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 it was different from the chocolate croissant. Right. Um, and finally, I got a, a tuna sandwich. 
which Nick, you almost got. Yeah, I was up there at the counter, and I don't know if it was just the, this. I don't want to impugn this particular coffee bean because it might have just been that some of their other merchandise was sold out. But the sandwiches that they had there on the shelf looked like they'd been there a while, and mm-hmm. I was like a little skittish about like uh, I don't know if I want to eat one of these because th- that was my lunch. I didn't eat lunch before this, so I had yeah. a jalapeno cheese croissant and half of a chocolate chip cookie for lunch today. Um, so I I, I wanted you to bragging have some, about being an adult. I know I wanted yeah. to have some, I wanted to have something a little bit more substantial. I wanted to have like a sandwich, but I was just like. Uh, I think these sandwiches, they, they might not yeah. settle with my tummy. Uh, yeah, the the uh, let's break it down, I guess. The, the, yeah, the tuna it. sandwich was actually not bad at all. There's a, a little bit of kale, and it's not heavy mayo. There's like a multigrain... Uh, it's almost like sandwich, th- like sandwich thins, like they're oh. like a, like a kind of like a thin bun, like yeah, a like very, a pseudo very, flatbread almost. Oh yeah, like a pseudo, yeah, great, great way to put it, a pseudo flatbread. Uh, but it was, it was actually good. I ate half of that, and it was, it was, it was good. It wasn't wow. bad for a pre-packaged sa- sandwich. We didn't have sandwiches when I worked there. Okay, so that's, yeah, a, new, that's a new thing. Yeah. And and it is it was the it was the coffee bean brand, but mm-hmm. then as far as all the other stuff goes, Nick, we can break it down. And Hannah, you tried a bite of every one of yes, these things. I did um, uh, without asking. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, you came in the door, didn't say anything to us, and just grabbed no. them right. and started tasting out of Mitch's hand. Yeah, yeah. It was very aggressive. And I said, yeah. "Ow!" If I remember correctly, <laughs> just yelling "ow" over and over again as you ate these. Um, what did you guys think? Because I have to say. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think Dunkin' Donuts is king, and I know mm-hmm. that it's like a different, it's almost a different quality right. level. Uh, in terms of pastries or coffee? In terms of everything. Or every, oh. I, I love Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but but uh, it's uh, too much. But, 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 uh, but it, th- I feel like this place is better than what you're going to find at Starbucks as far as food goes. Uh, I don't know about food. I think overall. I think wow, I, food, okay. I feel like it's kind of... It's kind of parallel. But aren't all these places hit or hit and miss? Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like anytime you get something from that little deli section or, or whatever, the, the little freezer section there, fridge section, it can be bad and it can be good. And anything in the case, the the bakery case, what, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Pastry yeah. case. Pastry case, mm-hmm. yeah, whatever. The, like, uh, any, the, I think those are a toss up too. Yeah, I don't feel like they're, I, like, I don't feel like you're ever going to get anything that's super satisfying from these places. Usually, mm-hmm. if you're eating at a coffee bean or a Starbucks, it's because you just need. It's your option. It's your only option to eat something on yeah. the go. Yeah. Um, a, a Dunkin' Donuts is a little bit different. I definitely take a Dunkin' Donuts way above it for food because yeah. I think Dunkin' Donuts actually has food that I want sometimes. But I'm saying this. The, it's this. Oh yeah, I think Dunkin' Donuts is way above, the, for, above all of them. But right. I'm saying coffee bean for me is better than Starbucks. Yeah, I can buy that. Mm-hmm. I like a, like a that 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 chocolate twist stick was. Sat, very satisfying, mm-hmm. and I thought the jalapeno. Even though the jalapeno was very spicy, I thought that that croissant was really good, and the cheese Danish was also all all three of them pretty good. And that tuna sandwich, not bad, like exactly kind of the level I expected. Yeah, I was surprised to hear that that that, that was pretty good. You I can try some of it afterwards. I, I feel like it's like a, oh, I can have some of this tuna sandwich that's been <laughs> sitting on your table for over no, an hour. No, no, it's no, in actually, the fridge. Oh, okay. Oh, I saw one sitting outside on the sidewalk. Oh yeah, glaring in the hot sun. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one I wanted. That try. was that was Nick's. I bought that one for Nick. Um, <laughs> okay. It's it, it was it was it, like I would say better, maybe better than the Seven Eleven tuna sandwich. I would have to guess. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I would. And that's a high bar to clear. <laughs> <laughs> They can do some stuff all right over there. I like some of Seven Eleven's food. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, so wait, so let's, uh, Hannah. What were your thoughts on the food that you tasted? Um, I'm I'm a fan of the pastries. Um, I, I I mean, like I mentioned earlier, I like lived off of bagels for right. a bit um, when I first moved here, and they have a, a thing that I like that they might not have had at this one. Um, was a fruit parfait. Oh, okay. that's right. That's, that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. And it it's one of those things where you don't feel it can feel like bad to eat like a croissant or a chocolatey thing, a half of a chocolate chip cookie. And I would eat that sometimes, just to uh, to be like, this is kind of more substantial, and mm-hmm. it's and it's good. Um, but yeah, the croissants are good. The bagels are pretty good. And they'll toast them. I guess every place yeah. does that. Every pl- I, I that, do like that, their that, that is kind of standard now. I think that you have yeah. to, in this day and age, you gotta toast thing, heat them you up gotta, if you want you to. Gotta. You gotta, you gotta do it. But yeah. anyways, I think that the food there is not bad. Mm-hmm. I think I think like you're saying, I get that that tuna sandwich did not look good. I think it is a toss up a lot of the time, mm-hmm. but I think they do all right, Nick. But yeah. the draw is. The coffee yes, and right. the tea. Well, let's and move I, on to beverage country. Yes. Well, neither of us got any of the tea leaf portion of uh, coffee bean. Right. Uh, yeah. Which 
is how can you even rank T? I mean, you can rank <laughs> T, and we'll probably do it in some future dumb double episode. Sure. But like, we're almost out of ideas for those. <laughs> that's like, that's like two episodes away. Almost. We're gonna be drinking. Yeah, we're gonna do, we're, we're gonna do the yeah the great tea challenge or something <laughs> stupid. Um, we'll call it like the Mister T experience. Yeah, I, and uh, I feel like you can't like whatever. I think some I think for me even more so, iced tea is like a thing to Doctor T and the women. Maybe we could. That's call like. It? <laughs> is it what on earth? I'm trying to think of what we call the, the tea episode. <laughs> Don't worry about that right okay. now, for God's sakes. It hopefully will never happen. Um, so I just think it's hard to judge. Teeing off? Oh, God. <laughs> um, I think it's hard to judge hot tea from right. Starbucks you know, the, coffee bean. Well, oh, they do iced tea. And yeah. the, the thing that I like about coffee bean is that they have what... We call in the South chewy ice. Oh yes, <laughs> which is that pellet like, ice. Yeah, yeah. It's um, that's a great point. Yes, good point. Yeah, and so and also from the South, I was like coming off of a sweet tea bender for mm. twenty plus years. Yeah, <laughs> and coming to LA where that's not a thing. Uh, coffee bean was the nice was a nice like segue from. I started drinking unsweet tea. And now that I think about it, they, like their tea bags are different. I think they actually may have decent tea there. Yeah, they yeah. do. Yeah. I think I, they have better. They're, they're certainly like more, they emphasize tea more than Starbucks. I think if you're a tea freak, that's probably a better yeah. destination. Yes. Now, Nick, what did what coffee did you get? Uh, I got, a, okay, here are the drinks I got. Drinks? Oh. Multiple. Beverages. I got two beverages. I got a cookies and cream ice blended. Oof. Now look. Wow. Good. I would not typically go for an ice blended drink. I'm not someone who's just going to get something that's equivalent of a shake as my beverage at a coffee place. This one was 520 calories and then had whipped, t- whipped cream on top of it. And that was the small oh, size. Oh, shit. Yeah. So here's the thing. It was good. I got what they were going for. However, the specific cookies and cream cookies. Uh-huh mixed with kind of the mocha coffee flavor uh-huh. made it t- have kind of this weird burned character like it was just like mm. those two elements working together it just like it 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 like it it cut the sweetness so much to the point where it kind of tasted almost charcoaly and i found it pretty unappealing i think that uh, you i think you make a good point because yeah. i think mixing those flavors there you have to take into consideration that coffee flavor that you're going to get to right I almost uh, feel like if I'd gotten because they have a they have a pure version which has no ca- no coffee in it. I almost feel like that version probably would have worked better. They also have an extreme version, <clears throat> which is just all. I think it's half milk, half coffee normally for all the ice blendeds. But you can say mm. extreme, and then it'll be all coffee. Oh, so if you wow. wanted, yeah. <clears throat> no, yeah. thank you. Yeah, I don't think I can Little handle secret, that. Little secret menu tip. For, yeah, th- something You're that welcome. I think not many people would want. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I normally get that because sometimes they're too sweet. Right. They are very, it's very and, sweet. Yep. And it's like, I think, less calories because it's not milk. Yeah, mm-hmm. no milk in there. And you feel like, for me, it's that thing where, oh, I'm just drinking a milkshake. Right. Because that's the, that's the main thing about these places is they've kind of made it okay for adults to drink milkshakes in the afternoon. For sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, they are, but they're these things on a hot and sunny day in Los mm-hmm. Angeles. Oh, yeah. It's 80 degrees outside? It's 80 yes. degrees. These ice blended are fun. You yeah, get it is it. fun. I it's agree. It's good to have one. I, I think yeah. this particular one didn't work. I think I would have liked something a little bit more refreshing. Mm. Um, and then I also just got a straight up coffee, a regular today's brew. Just Nick, a classic no wonder coffee. Why, hey, no wonder why you're so wired on today's episode. <laughs> <laughs> My energy I'm, level is sky high. It's at a 6 of 10. <laughs> <laughs> what was the blend? House um, blend? I, yeah, it was just a house blend. blend. Whatever they, whatever the today's, whatever you get when you say today's brew. Okay. It, that's what it was. Um, Is that what you said? I said, give me a regular today's <laughs> brew. <laughs> Jesus. And then he said, I want my cookie okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> It was, look, they have good coffee there. It was super hot. It was like hyping hot. It was oh. like, like, I just like the steam was just rising off of it. Like too, too, too hot for the, my tongue. So hey, I had to let that sit for a little bit. I, I mean, I don't want to bring them back up again, but it <laughs> sounds like the devil got a hold of your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was so. <laughs> So hot that I had to let it sit for a second, but mm. it's a good cup of coffee, and I mm. think that I, I prefer it to Starbucks coffee for sure. Like you were saying, you made this point on our Starbucks episode, bitch, that sometimes the, co- the Starbucks coffee has a little bit of a burnt character. Too burnt. They, it's too they roasted. They burn their beans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They burn the beans, which is what they teach us at Coffee Bean. <laughs> oh, really? Yes, I, that was on my quiz. Wow. I, yeah. There, yeah. So there's some anti-Starbucks propaganda oh, within their yeah. corporate training. They don't. Yeah, definitely. They That's don't awesome. teach us to say that. And also, peop, they get very offended mm-hmm. when people come in and say, I'll have a grande. Oh, right. So people would be like, 
a, a what? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know what they mean. The grande shit. Look, can I just... Can I just say that the grande shit is fucking stupid? Stupid. Yeah. It is stupid. I mean, it's been 20 years. It's just sort of established. But I get, yeah, I agree. But that, come on. Why, yeah, why it's I part just, of their marketing. Can I, I just a say annoying. a medium when I go into. St- what the fuck that you shit. You can. They'll know what to do. That They're is not going to so correct yeah. stupid. But some might. Because Coffee Bean, they would, I would see other baristas like passive aggressively. They know what a grande is. Yeah. And they'd be like, hey, what? We mm-hmm. don't have that size here. But the, uh, Venti <laughs> is large, right? Venti, yeah. Venti, or is Venti small? Venti is large. And then what's small? Small is tall. Oh, yeah. That's fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. It's bad. It I is mean, a bad uh, start. Uh, I agree. I agree, but this is like a stand up bit from like 1999. You know what I mean? It's just like tall. Hold call, on a second. Calling out the Starbucks sizes. That's the thing. I can get passionate about that. I'm, I'm not trying to do a stand up bit. I'm, I'm just, just saying, flatly yes. saying that right. it's fucking stupid and it's bad. That's fine. And that's it, you prefer coffee bean over that? I, confer, I, okay. I, I mean, I prefer coffee bean for multiple reasons. Mm. Nick is saying that I'm a, a stand up bit from when? A 1999. 1999. <laughs> well, guess what? What? Dave Chappelle was on the scene back in 1999. <laughs> Are you trying to say that he's a hack? No, I'm not uh, saying that. Yeah. Not, okay, all right. You, you turned the tables on <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, I did. What happened here. <clears throat> I did turn the table on you. No, fuck. I'm not. I'm oh. not impugning uh, Mr. Oh, Chappelle. And they're wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> they're currently on wrestling. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, like, I, I, I get what you're saying. That's a little obnoxious that Starbucks says. I definitely Starbucks is obnoxious. It is. Some, it is obnoxious, and Coffee Bean is a little bit more approachable. I feel like that's sure. part of their. It, it, and I guess, I guess like, all these places have a level of obnoxiousness. They have an air of elitism too, and like the places like Intelligentsia, like you were saying, that, or yes. the the these indie coffee places or small chains that have been worked as a response to the the omnipresence of Starbucks. Those places are even more obnoxious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, you want me to give you some stand up from two thousand seven? Please. These guys with their glasses, and they look like train engineers, man. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, the, 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 all the, the, the what do you say, uh, alchemists? They look like, do you say that they look like... Alchemists? Uh, wait, what is, what is the word I'm looking for? Alchemist is a word. No, I'm saying, is that what you, didn't you just say that or no? No, I didn't, I said, I said obnoxious. obnoxious. Oh, I thought you said they look like alchemists. No, I, can't, I mean, I could have said that. Oh, all right. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm wrong, possibly. But they, uh, Maybe I, mean, I did say, I don't think so. Did I say alchemists? I think you said obnoxious. I think I was trying to say obnoxious. I probably okay. came across as alchemists. Um, but I think alchemists are cool. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I'm glad that this led this down this road. I used this, this game, uh, <laughs> Wizardry 7 Crusaders of the Dark Savant. Oh, my God. So there, there were two games in the Wizardry series where uh, this new designer took over, and he added a bunch of classes that were previously not present in, the, present in the game, and one of them was an alchemist, which is not something you usually see in RPGs, but it was pretty mm. cool because it was like a mage, but he couldn't be silenced because he mixed potions. Mm. Oh God! And we know we we both talked about it. how much we like potions. We do potions both like awesome. we do like potions. But I think that would be you like like potions. Yeah, Hannah, potions are cool. Yes, we like potions. <laughs> you got a problem with potions? <laughs> you you worked at Copy Bean. You should love potions. It's very close. Uh, also, the devil loves potions probably because. Uh, Witchcraft. Mm, yeah, but you know what? You could fuck him up with the ultimate potion. <laughs> Holy water! <laughs> <laughs> you know, online, uh, people were... Uh, I, I told you, we, we talked about this. People were talking about how you're a comic genius. No one said that. This is true. No one said that. It was true. It was there. Uh, we got like because... Uh, 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 there's a new thing, complicated. Oh yeah, complicated. On Viewboo. View right. We're both in complicated. We're both in complicated, and then in that same thread, on that same thread above it, there was someone uh, talking about how you're the next comic genius, and I think it's for reasons like that where you talk. What was that game again? What Wizardry Seven? <laughs> Crusaders <laughs> of the Dark Wizardry Sinai? Seven. <laughs> Right references are People what like, put you in that category. They like deep cup, uh, uh, PC gaming references from the mid nineties. <laughs> no, just wait till I start talking about Wing Commander, baby. Oh God, <laughs> who who gets these? I mean, I guess some people must. get Some these. people do. I referenced Dark Side of Zine here one time, and there were a couple of Dark Side of Zine. Are heads. you making these up? No, <laughs> those are two in the Might and Magic series. Might and Magic. I had. think I saw he has a paper bag down by his legs and there's just random adjectives in there and it's, <laughs> it's a little magic trick of mine <laughs> um so wait let, let's let's get back to the drinks so i, I like their coffee a lot hannah you okay. you like the the coffee bean coffee we were talking tea a little bit where were we exactly in the the, the drink discussion Did you, you talk through your drinks yet i you you would finish your time i finished my drinks I, maybe yes. you had it but i'm saying you had finished yours anyways yes mm-hmm. uh, i got a mocha 
ice blended, Mm -hmm. which is just basically chocolate added to it. And I felt like, because I do the vanilla ice blended, and I like the vanilla ice blended a lot, but I feel like. I feel like it's sometimes you get that coffee t- and I was like, I don't, I don't not in the mood. For, yeah. For, I don't want to get that coffee taste. Right. So the mocha just kind of <laughs> destroys it. it. It is a shake. Yeah. This was a shake. I got a little bit of whipped cream on top of it and it was good. I mean, it was very good mm-hmm. and I'm a little bit wired cause I, I can sense that I, I am. I, 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 I can feel my heart racing. Right. If you don't normally have coffee and then you have something that potent, your body's definitely going to respond. My heart is going at about, Three beats per minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, it was it was good. It was nice. It was re- refreshing. It was very much like an ice creamy shake, like you were saying. Right. Mm-hmm. But those are fun sometimes. I like I like having a thing like that, and they do a good job with it. And like a, I feel like something like that is is hard to to get. If if I get this sort of thing at Starbucks. It does not taste good. Yeah, Mm-mm. and I can't get this sort of thing at, with a you know at, with at all these fancy coffee shops. They want to. They won't give you a nice blended. They'll laugh right. you out of the place. They'll laugh me out of there. They really will. <laughs> They'll put their thumbs beneath their suspenders <laughs> and start laughing. If laughing at me, I'll leave. Mm. I'll run out of that place and I'll and, and I'll, I'll feel like a fool. And and yeah. and and, and, and mm-hmm. I, I appreciate coffee being for for kind of having something like that you know what i mean right. like uh that it, it scratches that itch and, yeah. and, I, and i can't think of it other places that really scratch that itch like that besides dung and donuts yeah absolutely yeah. Mm-hmm. what like a culotta Is like that a culotta the... or something okay. like that yeah yeah Dunkachino, which sometimes or dunkachino sometimes i mean oh. and sometimes you can get this is. I think that the ice blended is very. It tastes very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, for 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 what it is, and yeah, sometimes you can get some. There are some whack versions of the mm-hmm. of the of the Dunkin'. Like some of those aren't great, but if you get the right one over there, you can you can you can have a, a version that's close to this. Right, Hannah, what, uh, talk us through your beverages today. Okay, apparently I got a thing that's very stupid, according to. <laughs> no, I just never heard any. I've never heard anyone order that before. I never heard anyone order that before in my life. <laughs> Well, I got a white chocolate mm-hmm. ice blended with no whip. Because no whip. I don't really like whipped cream. Mm, I like Cool Whip, mm-hmm. but I don't love whipped cream. Mm. I, okay. So it wasn't like a calorie thing because you're already drinking a shake. It's like, yeah, just go for it. But I, do, I just like truly don't don't love whipped cream. Hashtag whip it good or <laughs> hashtag whip it bad. Nick, you I just approve. nodded. I approve. Yeah. <laughs> but where, where do you fall, Nick? Oh man, a whip it good. Whip, whip it, it good, good for me too. Okay. Yeah. I like I used to like we, we were a cool whip family uh, growing mm. up. So that would be hashtag cool whip it good. But here's <laughs> cool, cool whip it bad. But I'm saying like <laughs> as I grew yeah, cool whip it good cool whip it good, cool whip it bad. But as I grew up, I became more of a traditional whip man. Mm. Mm. And I went out on my own and that was the one that I was like I, I enjoyed the dairy delight a little bit more. I told you that I would do actual whippets from whipped cream bottles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but I also at the same time enjoyed whipped cream. So, so it was a win win. <laughs> it was. It really was. Um, Man, if you get a, could get high off of inhaling a bag of Doritos, you'd be in hog heaven. <laughs> be in trouble. You'd be in rehab. I'd be. <laughs> so how, how'd that white chocolate drink so treat you? This is. I mean, like Mitch said, it's a hot day. Mm. It's a fun little treat. I don't remember the last time I've had one of these. You don't let. Mm. I mean, I don't. I have to police myself a little bit or parent myself. I don't right. I don't just let myself get a nice blended every day. I would totally drink one. Mm-hmm. But I make myself go to these other places or I brew something at home. I la- I don't make myself go. That's bad. <laughs> but I'll go to a blue <laughs> bottle. I go to go get them and and I would get laughed at if I if I asked for a blended thing. Um mm-hmm. but I try I drink like lattes right without sweetener normally. I try to do that. I've just started doing that. I used to drink just strictly like White chocolate ice blended. It's when I first moved here, like sugary stuff to the max, or yeah. an iced white chocolate latte. That was my thing. And Ooh. they put chocolate on the side of the cup. Oh yeah, which they, is they, too did, much. they did. They did with this one too. It kind of melted too. into it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay in the ice blended one. It's insane in the iced one mm-hmm. because you're like, if you're drinking the ice one, you can kind of trick yourself into thinking like it's just a coffee. Yeah, yeah. or whatever. But with the chocolate in there, you're like, no, 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 no. This right. is a full-blown dessert <laughs> yeah yeah um but yeah I, I i like it as a treat it's good hits the spot when it's when it's hot outside 100 percent. yeah mm. you need it yeah, yeah. So- and I, I am a big fan of the tea like well we're i'm working on love a little bit right now uh-huh. and hey they keep on they keep on matching us up uh yeah, yeah. 
filthy sexy teens and then love <laughs> where uh you play a normal person most of the time and i play a, a blubbering fool no <laughs> i always play like monsters <laughs> just like mean jerks <laughs> which is very opposite of what you are oh thank you and it's you. funny that i play like this foolish guy who's like lazy <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Yeah, no. Um, Randy is like the opposite of what I am. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we shoot at Paramount and there's a coffee bean on the lot. Uh-huh. And um, I've been getting tea there while while we're shooting just because during the day, I don't want to drink coffee and like get a big, big caffeine boost. So I have, I have nice a bit of a sugar it. rush going right now, actually. Yeah. From, yeah. from the, yep. That's yeah. the side effect of those. You get those sweet drinks with a bunch of caffeine. You can yeah. just get real jittery. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, let's get to our final thoughts. So Hannah, here's how this mm-hmm. works. We'll each sort of give our closing argument, if you will, on our lifetime of experiences at this particular chain, and then give us a rating on the order of one to five forks. We'll Oof. start with you. Oh, start with me. So much pressure. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, overall, I I to sum it up. I mean, it's not the best coffee in L.A. for sure. Mm-hmm. Blue Bottle or Go Get my or my picks uh-huh. for like what's a good coffee, quote unquote. But if I'm at the airport, I'm choosing coffee bean over Starbucks any yeah. day if that's a choice. Yeah. And when it's hot as hell outside, hail Satan! I'm getting a nice blended. <laughs> <laughs> This so. has turned to where, where I legitimately think maybe you do worship the devil. Oh, no, no. Did it slip out again? <laughs> um, God, it keeps happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but yeah, I so I guess I'll give it. Oof. I don't know. I'm bad at rating stuff. Four forks? Four wow. Forks. That's Very good. good. That's great. Oh, are we score. supposed to do spoons in this? Sure. We can do spoons. Sure. Okay. All right. So four spoons. Well, oh, that'll a one to one conversion ratio of forks to spoons because they're utensils. <laughs> um, uh, go ahead, Mitch. You know, when I first when I first moved here, I, I, I in my head, my impression was that Dunkin' Donuts rules the land. Starbucks sucks. Mm-hmm. So trying coffee bean and, and having a nice blended or having a, a vanilla latte with the with the as you call it chewy ice the little the little little tiny ice cubes mm-hmm. which are great you, it was great that you pointed that out because th- those, those, those are great great ice <laughs> um that's some great ice um the ice is nice right nick ice is very nice <laughs> um that that cha- that cha- I was like okay I can enjoy the uh, like other coffee places because I wasn't a big coffee drinker to begin with. Mm-hmm. I've gone to the fancy coffee places; they're good. But if you're gonna go to a place that's like uh, that's that's you know like what's what is the what what's like a fast food level or or, or, or it's a mainstream chain a mainstream like chain something level that's gonna be of readily coffee. available wherever you are probably yeah mm-hmm. th- then th- I, I feel like you can't go wrong with coffee bean I, yeah. I think it's I think it's a step above uh, Starbucks. And I am going to give it, in honor of our guests, 3.666 spoons. <laughs> oh, boy. Now, is that 3.6 repeating, or is that 3.666 exactly? <laughs> Let's just say 3.6 repeating, because the alternate is too scary. Too scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Three and two-thirds forks for the spoon man. Spoons for the spoon man. Um, I didn't know we could do partials, so, well, oh, well. Do you want to change your score? I won't take, no. I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> I like coffee bean. I think Hannah nailed it with her evaluation, pointing out that it, as far as comparing it to Starbucks, and Mitch, Mitch touched on this as well, it's just a better Starbucks. Mm-hmm. And that's the only fair place to compare it to because it's just, yeah, you compare it to some Indian coffee houses that can charge you, you know, $6 for a pour over or a cold brew. That's just a completely different thing. That's mm-hmm. like comparing. That's like comparing a Denny's to, you know, a, a fine dining restaurant. It's just, mm-hmm. it, it's a different thing. It's apples and oranges. Not quite apples and oranges. It's apples. It's Fuji apples and Gala apples. They're, <laughs> they're like two different things. They're, they're just a little bit uh, apart from each other. It's the apple comparison is, is confusing, too, because they are both fruit. I think they are apples and oranges. I'll go back. It is apples and oranges because okay. they're both fruit. Yeah. But they're a little different. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyway, here's what I was going to say. I like it better than Starbucks, and I gave Starbucks... Four forks, I believe. Whoa. Whoa! I rated it pretty high because, and part of the reason I rated Starbucks so high is because I feel like it's changed kind of the culture. It's had such an mm. impact in terms of like, oh, it's a place I can hang out that's not a bar. It's a place I can. These just are like, some fucking bizarre metrics you I'm put saying, on this. It's, it's a place I can hang out that's that's not a bar. It's a place mm. like, oh, if I have to use the bathroom, I know I can go to a Starbucks. Whereas previously you had to like walk through the back of a grocery store or something. Mm. You know what I mean? It, like things were, or different. you know, just go at home. But I'm just saying, like that. But that's not always an option. 
sometimes you're out and about on the town and you, uh, you need a rest stop. So they, they're kind of this de facto. Hashtag, where do you rest stop? <laughs> They're kind of this de facto like public restroom chain, right? Mm-hmm. They're kind of like public rest areas, pri- a privatized mm. version of it. Disgusting. <laughs> but but I mean, that, so that's part of Starbucks's. That's been start of, part of Starbucks's cultural impact. I like coffee beans stuff better, and I feel like I either have to downgrade Starbucks mm. or upgrade coffee bean wow. to make them sync up. And I think, to be honest with myself, in terms of evaluating this stuff and evaluating these chains in terms of how I really feel. I'm bumping Starbucks canonically down to three forks, wow. three spoons, and I'm going to slot in Coffee Bean, which, like me, is a Southern California original. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm gonna get People a- couldn't see how he put his hands up. <laughs> he put his hands up. What, what, what is even that pose? Like a, it's, it's like, a, like it's that like, emoji that's like, I don't know. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know emoji. <laughs> I was trying to sell, like, can, like, can you blame me? That's what I was trying to do. But I guess Jesus. it didn't come across like that. Oh, God. maybe that emoji means, can you blame me? <laughs> that's what I always thought. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for that reason, I'm bumping Starbucks down to three spoons, and I'm giving coffee bean and tea leaf four spoons wow. wow so it's in it's near it's golden plate club adjacent i fucked mm-hmm. up you didn't fuck up you get you said what was in your heart which was mm-hmm. 666 the number of the beast <laughs> <laughs> uh that was starbucks that was a no, boy i almost just said that was starbucks so what a faux pas well, you I, did dustin we'll edit that out who boy um, mm, I think it's fine. <laughs> that was coffee, bean, and tea leaf. Uh, it's time for a regular segment. We've got a food stuff. We're going to decide if it's worth putting in your mouth. It's snack or whack. Now, Hannah, I don't know if you have any food allergies or not. Do you have any food allergies? No. Okay, great. So this will work out great. <laughs> yep. Natalie, pick these up. This is something I haven't seen before. Guess Hershey's- what? Even if you did... I'd we would have made you yeah, eat it. <laughs> <laughs> you would be willing to die for I this shitty podcast. I was wondering why there was a doctor here. <laughs> right. <laughs> He's standing That's, quietly. Mitch just has him on standby. <laughs> 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 so, You're saying for my life, right? Aww. Sick fuck. <laughs> um, so we've got these assisted it. suicide. <laughs> <laughs> Just say the word, man. <laughs> so we've got these Hershey's cookies. So there's a few different varieties of these, and I'll pass these around. This first one is caramel. Mm, mm. Layer. What does it say? La- Hershey's layer. Hershey's layer crunch yes. cookies. Okay. Uh, and I don't know. I think this is Hershey's first foray into baked goods. We've also got a vanilla cream version. I'll pass this bad boy. They around. come in yeah. ba- like little bags, like. Almost like Hershey bars. Oh, they're individually sealed as well. That's a little seamed. strange. Okay, and then we've also got the kind of a waste of. Plastic. It is yeah. this. This packaging is very wasteful. That'll that'll factor into my evaluation. Um, but there's oh, also wow. these. There's oh, also these mint ones over here. It looks like look a at Hershey's these cookies. Also. It looks like a Hershey's bar. Wait, so they aren't even cook, they don't even look like cookies. Oh, I get two. They they don't really look like cookies. Hey Nick, will you throw me one of the the one the no not that one but the other one. All right, the vanilla cream. Here you go. Vanilla cream, great. I did, a ba- I did a bad job. <laughs> you threw it at the top of my head. Here's the thing. I tried okay. to throw it with my left hand. I'm right-handed. Okay, here I go. I'm going to throw it. You uh, love basketball? Look, you hit me. I'm not a southpaw. I'm not Kobe. I, I'm not ambidextrous. Oh. Okay, wait. No, I want him to throw it. Okay, 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 I, with okay. my right hand, I'll nail this one. Oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. That was a connection. <laughs> that Pretty was a connection. Throw. Okay. Um, it was a little bit of a hard throw. Uh, look, uh, so I got the the... What the way? Which one? I got the mint in front of me. Uh, mm-hmm. tell, talk me through what you guys are, are chomping I'm into. I'm about to chomp into the caramel. Mm, I just took a bite of the caramel. It has kind of the texture of a, not quite, but kind of the texture of a crunch bar. Mm-hmm. It's got like a little bit of ricey sort of texture to it. I think they're trying to take over the crunch bar. That's what it seems. They may, they, the cookie part is too... Why is that in there? It's so big. It's like, not even a really a cookie. Right, I totally my, agree. I, my, my, uh, eating these, these are not cookies. No, they're not cookies. These aren't cookies. <laughs> Look how big the font is for cookie. Cookie is like in 72 point font. Yeah. And layer crunch is like in 24. But Nick, hold on, it doesn't mean they are bad. We have to judge yeah. these as they are. Well, the name is bad. The name is bad. Deceptive. The name is bad. Very deceptive. <laughs> Wasteful packaging. I don't like that they're trying deceptive to trick name. us. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm having the vanilla vanilla cream one right now. The mint one is the most like a cookie. Okay. It's kind of like a it's like a thin mint. Mm. I don't love the cream the creaminess of the vanilla cream one. It's kind of it's a little off putting. I'm only eating half of these and throwing the rest away. Yeah, that's I'm what I'm doing. A bite too. I'm having, I'm just having a bite. We're we're being wasteful. This packaging is wasteful, <laughs> and we're being wasteful. We could have shared each uh, each of these. Oh. No, whatever. Yeah, there's Fuck three it. pieces on each one. Fuck it, whatever. Sweet. Well, we didn't know at the time. That's what. That's they were true. Be. Mm-hmm. That's true. All right, I'm having this uh, caramel one now too as well. Yeah, now I'm gonna go dig into my final one, the vanilla cream. 
A lot mm. of caramel. Mm-hmm. A little pretty gooey. Pretty chewy gooey. So soft and chewy. Mm, I don't know. I, I think I agree with you, Mitch. The mint is the closest to a cookie. Mm-hmm. And in terms of these other ones, I feel like you're just subver- subverting my expectations of what this thing was going to be. Yeah. What do you think, Hannah? Yeah, I agree. I think... Well, I just made a gross mouth noise by the mic. Sorry, okay. everyone. That's all right. We're all go, go ahead. Sorry. Or those who love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. Congratulations <laughs> to those who like it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I don't like... I don't want a crunchy piece of a shortbread cookie in my mm. candy bar. Yeah. yeah. And this is essentially a candy bar. It's a candy bar first and a cookie tenth. Right. I don't know. <laughs> I, I I agree with that. Maybe maybe tenth on the list of what this is well, is yeah. a cookie. Yes. What are they doing with these? What is their ah. thought process? These are these are off. Hershey's. These are these are off. Something went it's wrong. So weird. This even if they put just like kind of like a cookie texture on top, it would have been okay. Right. Or shape of or oh, yeah? anything. Yeah. I think that they roundies? were like Why the Hershey's bars are classic. They're 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 world renowned. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's a museum. There's a museum. <laughs> I've been to that museum. Yeah. I ride that. I rode that Hershey ride. My parents went to that museum. They said it was kind of whack. Is it all right? As a child, I liked it. Okay. We almost. We also went to Amish country. Okay. Uh, so overall, yeah, I guess that's probably a shitty trip. Um, <laughs> we can insult Amish people because they don't listen, right? Right. Fuck the Amish. <laughs> uh, Nick, do you have anything to say about the Amish? Uh, yeah, uh, you guys are right. <laughs> Everyone knows you're right. That's why they're, they they make fun of you because they're afraid to abandon our sinful ways and join you and guarantee entry into the kingdom of heaven. There might be some. There might be some Amish people. Do you think that there's any Amish people who, on their rum rum springa, listen to they they say, "I can't wait to listen to Doughboys on my rump springa." That's like if you if you and I were Amish, that's what we'd do. We just we'd like play Mario Kart and listen to indie comedy podcasts. Like, this is living. And then they wouldn't let us back into the Amish village because we were too late. You guys weren't bad enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, between the, I, I mean, uh, it's funny to try to rank these. Yeah. Because they're all kind of close. I actually thought at one point maybe vanilla cream was even my favorite. Me too. But yeah, maybe vanilla cream, the caramel, and then mint, even though mint is maybe the best version of what this yeah. thing is they supposed to be to yeah what they're trying to do <laughs> uh man i gotta go whack yeah i, I do yeah. this i the only thing i do is i flip vanilla cream and mint i put mint number one in my rankings but I, I pretty much agree with you these are pretty whack what do you think anna i think pretty whack mm. boy what a disappointment wow. so deceptive i know they looked even though they look kind of good that art kind of looks like a cookie like the, yes. the picture of it is like oh that looks that's a weird looking yeah, cookie it looks like it's going to be round i do have to say that, that the, photo the green in the in the Ew. It, it, look, it like <laughs> looks like mutagen yeah it does it's very it's it got a mut- mutagen level of green coming out of the cookie mm, keep is your turtles that away green from that in, in real life no wait keep your turtles away from it because you don't want them to turn into ninja turtles yeah <laughs> If you're, if you're keeping a turtle as a pet, you don't want it to turn into a ninja turtle. Why? That seems like the coolest thing that could happen. But then what are you going to do? You, are, you resp- are you its legal guardian? <laughs> mm, I guess if you don't want, like, a kid. Right. Because, wait, are they babies well, no, first? No, they're, like, teenagers. Wait, do they immediately just... become teenagers? That is kind of... I, I forget. I haven't watched the Ninja Turtles. Car- I, it used to be one of my favorite mm-hmm. shows as a child. I had all the Ninja Turtles figures. Right. But were they children? <laughs> I don't know the lore. If they, gri- I think, I think they were kids, and I think Shredder raised them. Mm, yes, no, I Shredder agree. raised them. The evil Shredder, I meant Splinter. I'm Splinter. sorry, okay. Splinter raised. I didn't. But Splinter I, was also was a rat. Yeah. So that's confusing too, because <laughs> Splinter. I know in the movie that it shows like a, a like a, a young Splinter as a rat in a cage. He was. The, he mm. he had like a ninja master owner. Yeah. So he learned the ways of ninjutsu mm-hmm. from his owner. From his as, owner. As a, as a domesticated rat, and yeah. then when he. Uh, was affected by the mutagen. He imparted the, that knowledge onto, onto the turtles. But the it's kind of weird because, like, he, he, yeah, I guess the turtles were babies, and right. he was like a middle-aged rat. I guess. <laughs> I guess is, so. Yeah, is what it was. He was a dad rat. And he was. He, a yes. rat. he was. He was an older rat, <laughs> and then became like a rat man. <laughs> um, but I feel like, yeah, I guess you wouldn't want a, a little child, a, a little turtle baby child, right? So it depends on how old your turtle is. That's true. Yeah, if you got a, if you if got you a teenage a... turtle, maybe you do want it to go near the, 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 the cookies. <laughs> yeah, but what if you got like an old turtle and turns into an old man to deal with this old fuck? <laughs> 
Uh, just like a restaurant, we value your feedback. Let's open up the feedback. Today's email comes to us from Harry Nelson. Harry writes, as a Midwesterner who moved to New York, I was excited to explore the increased pizza presence on the East Coast. Imagine my surprise when I vo- visited a local pizza establishment only to be mocked for asking for a cheese pizza. It turns out that the common term here is plain pizza because the cheese is implied. I was dismayed at this information not only because of everyone's insistence that it was wrong despite several successful cheese pizza ordering years, but also because I feel cheese pizzas like vanilla milkshakes aren't plain but their own unique flavor. What do the Doughboys think of this term, and have there been any other food colloquialisms that have thrown you for a loop? Hannah, you're from Georgia. Mm-hmm. Were they saying plain slice, cheese slice? What would they call a cheese pizza down there? I think we would call it a cheese pizza. Okay. I think that would be plain. That feels weird, right? Yeah, I, I definitely. I've heard it on on stuff about uh, like mob movies and stuff set in New York City. I've definitely heard the plain slice thing. Um, Mitch, is that a, a, a Bowtown thing? You guys say plain <laughs> slice up there, cheese slice? Uh. Yeah, we say plain or cheese pizza. I, 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 my question is, when he went to New York City uh, and was walking around, was uh, everybody's talking, playing as he was walking around? His name is Harry Nielsen, right? Harry Nelson. Oh. But yeah, that's adjacent to Harry, adjacent to Harry Nielsen. <laughs> that's fine. I spent all this time looking up to make sure I was right. right so that's why you were staring at your phone. Yeah. Not listening to this guy's email. <laughs> You're trying to nail a reference. That you love to correct. nail references all the time. No, it was great. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was a did. lot of fun? I'm glad you did it. I'm glad you did it. It was fun that you did that. Uh, what's his question? <laughs> Were there any, like, a, do they call it a plain pizza or a cheese pizza where you're from? And then also, are there any food colloquialisms that you've heard either in your hometown or somewhere else that have thrown you for a loop? Yeah, I, I feel like the plain and cheese thing has always kind of been a battle since the beginning of time. Right. Because uh, we would sometimes we'll say plain cheese pizza. <laughs> um, and, 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 but like, or a cheese pizza. I feel like cheese pizza is, is, is what you got to say now. But i you know what? I think it's, I think it's gone. I think it's changed. I think early on you could say plain pizza, like way back in the day, and people would just know that's a cheese pizza. Mm-hmm. And then now you got to say cheese pizza. Does that seem right to you? I think it just, I think it really depends where you come because I, I where, mm-hmm. where, you, where you're from. Because I think that the, I think if you say plain slice in New York, I think that's just still what people say. I could be wrong. Yeah. Right. So, but, but yeah, I think cheese pizza is the most clear. Slice of the cheese. Most I'll say give me a slice of cheese. I think that's the most yeah. universal. Yeah. I think that's understood anywhere. You yeah. wouldn't say slice of plain. Right. <laughs> slice of plain is very strange to say. That's yes. so weird. Give me a slice of plain. Yeah. Plain slice sounds okay, but slice of plain sounds Oh, wait. Why is, why is Harry <laughs> Nielsen all upset about this? Harry Nelson. I, he's mm. not upset. He said he was just thrown for a loop. Hmm. He just wasn't used to it. He's fr- he's a Midwesterner. He's from the heartland. Yeah. Mm. He gets to the big city. They got a different kind of salsa there. Mm. <laughs> and then also. Oh, wow. Now you get your references in. <laughs> but also. But also. Um, that people are saying plain slice instead of cheese slice. He's not used to it. I think that's a, that's a common experience, right? Yeah. You're, you're not from one of the big cities and you get. Yeah. You know what, Harry? I, I don't think you can fucking hack it in the big city. Move back <laughs> home. Get back home. Get back home. Give up on your dreams, Harry. I mean, in Georgia, everything is Coke. Like any oh, kind right. of drink is I'll have a Now Coke. that bothers me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's that, insane. That is insane. Right. It's insane. That is very truly insane. It's got to drive the Coke people crazy. And they're based in Atlanta. No, that's yeah. why I think that's, oh, that's why, why it's a thing is because it's like it's mm. there's a word for it. And I can't remember now, but it, there's a term that marketers use that if you're Kleenex, like we call Kleenex any kind of tissue a Kleenex. But right. that's mm. a brand or like lip balm chapstick mm-hmm. it's I, that kind of same thing when you're doing an internet search you google something yeah that yeah. brand has been yeah. adopted as like the, the word the for thing it. yeah, yeah. I, th- I think that if you i think with with coke i think that's okay for like like if you want some sort of co- like cola based drink i think that's okay Except, you know, I obviously like Coca-Cola better than mm-hmm. Pepsi or whatever, but I especially just think of, like, my grandma or somebody who's mm-hmm. like, I'll have a Coke, but they just want, like, a cola. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, like, if you want, like, a Sprite and you're like, I'll take a Coke, then that's that's insane. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make any up. sense. Yeah. But what, what what is what is Harry's issue, though? Like, that he, like, ordered a plane? <sighs> really he read, he him. said, he just said that he was thrown for a loop by it. It's a, It's not a big issue. He's not, like, he's mm. not throwing a fit. He just yeah. said that he, he was a little confused. He just wants to know if he's he's not alone. Yeah, he and wants that- to, I was disoriented when I experienced this. I want to yeah. see if that was just me or if that's universal. And it's I, apparently pretty universal. Yeah, it's, it is universal. And I and I and I think that it is just you go with cheese. Yeah, you go. You got to go just with cheese to make it clearer, mm-hmm. I guess. Right? And also Harry 
can't hack it in the big city. <laughs> you definitely can't <laughs> hack it in the big city. Go home, Nelson. Uh, if you have a question or comment about the world of chain restaurants, you can email us at doughboyspodcast at gmail.com. To get the Doughboys Double, our weekly bonus episode, subscribe at patreon.com slash doughboys. Hannah Kasolka, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for what having me. What a treat. Me. What a yes. delight. Do you have anything that you would like to plug? And don't <laughs> plug the goddamn devil. <laughs> 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 well, he makes me. I don't have a choice. Um, no, I, I don't. Uh, no? No, I That's don't know. That's a fine answer. You can... The extra, watch The Exorcist. Yeah, sure. Watch The Exorcist if you want. We got yeah. a season two, so you can catch up. And, there you go. Hell yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, congrats on that. Thanks. And check out Coffee Bean. <laughs> and check out... Yeah. Check out the white chocolate ice blended. Yes. I don't know. Yeah, it looked good. <laughs> Nick, you got anything you want to plug? Uh... Yeah, check out a uh, coffee bean. <laughs> <laughs> what about like Moon Citizens? For what was the game that you loved? <laughs> Moon Citizens. I don't know what it was called. Uh, Wizardry Seven. Wizardry. Yeah, seven. check out Wizardry Seven. <laughs> Crusaders Hold on of the a Dark second. Savant. Moon Citizens. <laughs> it's Wizardry Seven. <laughs> Get it That's right, dipshit. Crazy. <laughs> That'll do it for this episode of Doughboys. Until next time, for the Spoonman, Mike Mitchell, I'm Nick Weiger. Happy eating. See ya. Oh, hey there. Hi. Do you like being happy and not sad? You should check out the podcast Hello and Good News. Each week, I sit down with a comedic guest and tell them all about the people, places, and current events affecting the world in a positive way. Whoa. So check out and subscribe to Hello and Good News on iTunes or your favorite podcasting app. Yeah.